It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Aunt Pruitt's here from Hands-On Photography. Stacy Higginbotham from Stacy on IoT. Professor of Journalism at CUNY. Jeff Jarvis. Lots to talk about. The first deep fakes of President Zelensky. Will it fool anybody? And get ready, more to come. Should we stop using Kaspersky antivirus? And TikTok star, TikTok star is getting a White House briefing. I think uh, Saturday Night Live did it best. It's all coming up next on Twig. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twig. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 655, recorded Wednesday, March 16th, 2022. No time for slug collation. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Give your team an engaging IT development platform to level up their skills. Volume discounts start at five seats. Go to itpro.tv slash twit. And don't forget to mention twit30 to your designated IT Pro TV account executive to get 30% off or more on a business plan. And by Nureva. Traditional audio conferencing systems can entail lots of components. Installation could take days and you might not get the mic coverage you need. That's complex expensive. But Nureva Audio is easy to install and manage. No technicians required. And you get true full room coverage. That's easy economical. Learn more at Nureva.com. It's time for Twig This Week in Google. The show we cover the latest news from Google, the Googleverse, the Facebookverse, the Twitterverse, the Instagramiverse. Stacy Higginbotham is here from StacyOnIoT.com. Hello, Stacy. That is a lovely sweater you're wearing. I, for the radio audience, I just want to describe it. It's like a speckled robin's egg if a robin's egg were black and white. It's funfetti. Funfetti? Is that what they call it? It has a well, touch this looks of like the Norwegian cake. Yeah, funfetti fish cake. boat, too. Yeah, it's a fish, fish boat meets funfetti. And that yeah. is uh, Jeff Jarvis... <laughs> Leonard Tao, Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. And I'm thinking we really do sound like a morning show, actually, at this point. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> we got the sound effects and everything. Just own it. That's Ant Pruitt. <laughs> I'm Little Leo. He's the mighty Ant Pruitt. Twit.tv slash hop. That's right. Working out his uh, delts a little earlier, so uh, stand back. <laughs> They might burst through the screen. My delts need a little work. That's you, I hard. saw you on Twitter saying how hard it was to work the delts. It, it is. Well, that's, the rear delts in that's particular. The, the rear delts, the shoulder muscles, right? The deltoids. Correct. But yes. you have three heads on your on your shoulders, and the rear delt is the hardest one to work out. So when they say you opinion. have a good head on your shoulders, they're talking about your deltoids. Um, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. <sighs> the reason we're in a kind of weird mood is for the last half hour we were playing with this Amazon app we talked about uh, last week. Turns out one of the founders heard us, or more likely his clip service, alerted him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure he's a yeah. regular, yeah. loyal listener. Uh -huh. Matt Wishing Sandler. for this week in Amazon. Matt Sandler, he said, uh, thanks for the kind words about on amp. Love for you to play the beta, play with the beta. So uh, he gave us a code. Turns out the codes are easy to come by. You have to have an iOS device. It's an iPhone uh, thing. Mm. And uh, I played a song. I uh, made some noises. <laughs> one person. Made a lot of noise. Well, a lot of noise. You tuned in at the end. And then the one person was listening, which is. We took a call from. Here John. live in studio. <laughs> but uh, it, was it was fun. Meta. It, it's kind of amazing, really, how technology makes it possible to do something that, you know, in an earlier time, my time, mm -hmm. took a lot of money and a transmitter and a tower and a radio this station. like Howard Stern license. screaming about how podcasts are ridiculous. And this is before He's Joe so Rogan made a fortune with him. He's yeah. so wrong. Um, people kept telling Stern, do a podcast. He said, no, no they're, they're a joke. Kind of like the classic old radio guy, right? Or was I mean, I called into him. Or I like the old magazine him. people. Yeah, same mm. thing. Mm. That's true too. Same yep. thing. Yeah, uh, but you know, Stern got what they say two hundred million or five hundred million, five hundred million to do uh, to move to satellite from broadcast. Yeah, that he's, works. He's, he's fine. fine. He's doing yeah. all right. Yeah. Rogan only got two hundred million. Yep. <laughs> Poor sap. Poor sap. Uh, By the way. 
Whatever happened to Joe Rogan? He's still there. This is the but funny thing. There's when just you no agree. discussion of him now. Yeah, well, yeah, it just kind of came and went. I'm glad. We, yeah. You know what happened? The war in Ukraine happened, really. Well, exactly. Real, real news. Real happened. news. And then all of the silly news went by the wayside for a while. Good. Gas prices um, went over four bucks. By the way, it's over five bucks here, right? Yeah, it's almost six. Yeah, it's like six. Yeah. Well, it's California has always been ridiculous. Well, we have. Yeah, a, I, was, I always tell people that you're paying California prices now. Yay. There is. I don't know. If, I think this is why. Still there, not paying European. There's a law price. that uh, gas you buy in California has to be refined in California, so it's more expensive because they have to ship it here crude and then they refine it. So that's kind of ridiculous because it, it, it's a still less than what they pay in Europe. Protection yeah, laws. In European, it's a protection it's law. It's to. Yeah, it was passed sucks. by the refineries. I'm sure. It's like the chicken tax. We're talking about this with Sam Abul Samad. Wait a minute. Chicken tax. Do you know about the chicken tax? All your no. chickens have to do tail, the sir. There's a 25%, 25% tariff on light trucks imported into the U.S. Let me tell you how that started. Lyndon Johnson imposed the tariff in 1964 in retaliation for European tariffs on American chicken imports or exports for us into Europe. Twenty, So they charge 25% on our chickens, so we charge 25% on their trucks. But in 1964... There weren't a lot of Americans importing light trucks from Europe, right? So the chicken tax is gone, long gone. Mm -hmm. In fact, the average U.S. tariff rate on imports is 2%. But the chicken tax on light trucks still stands. How? Which, which mean, it's bizarre. And so for this reason, uh, a lot of trucks, are, it's actually been good for the truck industry in the United States. Not so good maybe for competition and prices uh, for people buying them. The original order was a 25% tariff on potato starch, dextrin, brandy, and light trucks. Uh, <laughs> One of these things is not like the uh, other. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, all the other products, the tariffs are gone except for the light trucks. That's why they call it the chicken tax. This is, to me, why uh, trade regulation is not often as... It's to benefit somebody. Right? Well, and also, I, I've mentioned this book tons of times, but but I love this book about the history of the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company as the first chain store in in in, in America. Yeah, and the regulation and legislation that came out raised prices to protect mom and pop groceries and hurt consumers and voters. Right, protectionism always does. Well, it. yeah. Okay, hold of up. Corporate of corporate entities. Well. Yeah, maybe. Or you also might have benefits outside of just, I mean, raising prices to consumers is not the only rubric we should look at. We should also look at like how the workers fared. Was it better to work under a mom and pop store? Maybe. Was there any stopping progress? No. Well, mm -hmm. there's, but there is a chance to say, hey, is this progress giving us the benefits we want across yeah, I'm the board? Not against is that. price the only benefit we want? I'm not against that. The problem is these things tend to last, outlast their utility. And they have oh, also yeah. all sorts of unintended consequences. The chicken and the, tax and the is a horse perfect example. Or chicken is out of the bar. But every, the doing horizon. nothing has unintended consequences sure, as that's well. That's true. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, it is Congress's job to try to level the playing field. The only problem is all that money on one side of the seesaw really changes the equation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is 100% <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we knew it was going to happen. It has happened uh, about eight hours ago. A video, a fake video with Ukraine President uh, Zelensky was published asking uh, Ukraine troops to retreat and surrender their weapons. But it was a deep fake. And, and an obvious deep fake. I think accounts. fortunately, in fact, I'll show it to you. Uh, fortunately, an obvious deep fake. But... It's only a matter of time before they're not obvious, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't understand Russian, but, or <laughs> Ukrainian. Ukrainian, but Ukrainian. That's not his voice. His head is his kind of not, head. yeah. But, it, you know, you're on a battlefield <laughs> looking at it on a small <laughs> phone. You might, you know, yep. you might want to yeah, kind they're, of they're retreat. You might want to stop fighting. Yeah. You can the good thing about these deep fakes is they're generally deep stupidity. How long is that going to, how long can we well, count on that? Well, but then we have, it's cool we text, have systems, though. this happened in text, it happened in photos, it happens in every medium of communication that comes along, and that's why we have things like branded news organizations to tell you what's real and not, and to put the effort into reporting them. 
I, I'm, I'm not terribly concerned. Yeah. This is, it's sad that that's out there, but I still enjoy the fact that there's tech available that we can utilize this from a creator standpoint. You like Adobe's AI, mm -hmm. for instance. And as well as even the Blackmagic Design AI stuff, too. It, yeah. it's, it's good for creating decent, cool content, yeah. but yet it can be put into the wrong hands and put stuff like that out there. Here's a, here's a really good example of how it's not black and white in any case. We've talked a lot about a Clearview AI. They were mm, scraping yeah. face, face recognition uh, from uh, public places like Facebook. Um, there's all sorts of issues with face recognition anyway, yep. especially with people of color. Yep. Uh, but there are some uses for it. Ukraine has mm -hmm. started to use Clearview AI to identify Russian soldiers. Um, good or bad, I don't know. Seems like it's a lot of that going on. It's one one bit of tech or or some story that's happening around this war where it's it, it you you want this AI to be for the power of good, but yet at the same time, it's still a bit of a mess. It can go be both ways. <laughs> well, it clarifies that tech is a tool and we can use right. it mm -hmm. both right, right, ways. Right. And it also offers good examples of why or how it could be used in a negative way right. and in a positive way. So right. then you can start way. thinking about legislation or regulation around it. Clearview AI gave uh, Ukraine free access. They're using it at checkpoints as people are coming and going to vet people of interest, among other things. Um, yeah, I think this is a good use of it. We talked about Taylor Swift using face recognition at her concerts to keep stalkers mm -hmm. away. Another, a good, a good use, so. But a questionable use might be retail stores like Home Depot or Target using facial recognition to profile shoplifters coming into their stores. Right. Yeah. Or, sorry, accused shoplifters. Profile. Alleged or, shoplifters. Or, right. Not just accused, but but um, tried and, and guilty shoplifters would be. But they're not I just they're they're problem. doing alleged. They're not just convicted shoplifters. Well, and, and because of the high false rate of false positives, that's another issue. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we've seen now a number of stories in the last couple of weeks of uh, black men who have been held in prison, who have been arrested, who have mm -hmm. been detained because they incorrectly were matched. Yep. By uh, just by like thought they uh, fit. eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses are terrible too. Eyewitnesses for years yeah. and years and years yeah. and years, and so the, the the discussion at the level of principle is the degree of, of confirmation that would be needed for either to be believed. Here's a test, and Anne, I think you raise another important point too: mm -hmm. is what what this is all doing. A lot of the presumptions about bad use or bad activities of the platforms, a war puts that in a different light. Sure does. So platforms getting rid of bad content. Well, they get rid of RT. Um, okay. Well, then Russia kills a platform and people can't can't get any information. Not so okay. Right. And it, it creates a new context for the discussion. Yeah. There's a story in our rundown about Slack that it, it, it hit close to home because that I troubled me. Yeah, yeah. I don't use um, I don't use Google Hangouts or anything anymore. But my family, our chat is Slack. But, really? Yeah. Our, our group chat is Slack. You and show PowerPoints to each other? I'm not going to comment on that. Um, <laughs> so what, do you, what What story? The one about Slack yeah. cutting off access to Russia? Yes, that Russia? one. Right. Because yeah. they're being right. sanctioned, but affecting... at the same time, what about the people there yeah. in Russia that has nothing to do with that war that may be just like the Pruitt family and use it as group chat? Right. You know, to communicate, to make sure, hey, you got an appointment at four o'clock, make sure you're there on time. You know, stuff like that. Or developers trying to stay employed within the economy or or dissidents arranging events. Um, yeah. It's, well, the truth is a lot of these sanctions seem a little misguided. They seem, well, the, people do them for a couple of reasons. Sometimes they just do it to look good, right? Virtual signaling. Yeah. Signaling. Yeah. <laughs> so there's certainly that. I don't know if Slack, that's why Salesforce is doing it, but they, they own Slack. But the other thing uh, I think is a, is even a more serious concern is it seems to be you're doing this to put pressure on the populace to what overthrow Putin? They're not. Are they going to do responsible that? Responsible for the, the war. Right? I, if you want to punish oligarchs who are benefiting from Putin, mm -hmm. that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But but if you're a Russian citizen, many of them seem to be against the war. They're suffering 
greatly, as we know. And wh what you is the end game of that, that? That you overthrow? That like, what you're going to rise up? Is that what we're trying to get done here? Putin doesn't care. Right, so, Does Putin right. care? Yeah, seize right. the yachts. Don't take away their productivity software. There you go. Yes. There you go. There's a the slogan. <laughs> take the yachts, not my slack. Show title. <laughs> take my yachts, please. <laughs> Uh, Russians saying farewell to Instagram. This is another example right. of that. In fact, Instagram is really widely that was used by people. Wasn't that because Russia cut it off? Russia cut it off. Oh, okay. On that side. Yeah. Well, to hell yeah. with you, Russia. <laughs> uh, farewell posts at midnight on they, Sunday. They gave them time to say goodbye, too, which is fascinating. 48-hour grace period to say goodbye to Instagram. Um, the reason Russia regulator gave, Ruscom... Nanzor, uh, is that Meta has decided to to allow posts calling for violence against Russians on Instagram and Facebook. So, and you know what? Honestly, if you take out the the invading Ukraine part of this, I kind of, of course, if if we wouldn't want Russians to be able to post on a social network act, advocating for the assassination of no, we wouldn't our people no company uh, made an exception to its policy against inciting violence so long as the posts represented political expression against Russian forces invading Ukraine. Oh, calls for violence against ordinary Russian citizens are prohibited. So Russia decided to cut off Instagram. Yeah, you know, that is a different story because that's Russia doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. This is, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like charity. Bill Gates said, I'm not going to donate any money until I can do it right. I'm not supposed to throw money at things. And I think it's the same thing where it's hard to figure out what the right action is and where the, in the case of charity, where the money should go. Mm -hmm. This is where Stacey sanctions. and I will come to agreement, I think, is that she says all the time that we need discussion. And I say all the time we need principles. And, and, then, and yeah, we need discussion about principles. What is it that we think? Um, what's the internet we want? On what principle should it be to be ruled? How free should expression be? How much should we fight for that? Uh, even in the case, even in such cases as this. Um, and how do we here. how do we make exceptions? Because that's another. Yes. I mean, like, it's silly to think. I mean, we might have fabulous moral principles, right? But at the end of the day, we all have to make decisions, kind of individually or even collectively, about what we're going to throw under the bus, as it were. Yeah, but on what basis? What's our yeah. goal? And then we just Why have to commit here? to it. Yep. Or change it. The thing too, Stacey, you're right, is that, is that you can hit it, you can hit an exception and say, ah, that means the rule, the principle was, was, was wrongly thought through. And so you can change that, but you should live with the principle you then um, uh, put out there, I, I think. Here's another complicated- Or you can say, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's yeah. another complicated one. Kaspersky, antivirus, very widely used. It comes mm -hmm. out of Russia. Uh, the German government has said, stop using Kaspersky because we're worried it could be used back to doors. attack us as a backdoor. The German Federal Office for Information Security published the warning That's on Tuesday. it has been an issue for a while. Well, we remember, uh, in fact, that Kaspersky was implicated uh, in the uh, famous leak of NS NSA tools from the United yeah. States. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Um I'm trying to, uh, what was the name of those tools? Let me see if I can find that. Uh, the NSA contractor who brought those tools home had Kaspersky antivirus on his computer. One of the ways Kaspersky works is if it senses something that's potentially dangerous, not necessarily something it has signatures for, and a lot of antiviruses are doing this now, it has what's called cloud detection, they will take what they think is bad and upload it to the cloud. Well, as it turned out, what it got was the NSA tools and they were uploaded to the cloud in Russia. And it's always been thought that Kaspersky had connections with the Russian intelligence agents. And they think that's how the, the NSA tools be, were leaked, in fact, to Russia. It's and that, that makes sense. I mean, every government yeah. is looking for zero-day attacks. So... Yeah. Kaspersky, by the way, people's antivirus is a great way to get to that. Kaspersky Lab, this is from the story, which was back uh, four years ago. Kaspersky Lab does not dispute it discovered hacking tools on the computer. Uh, but they, they say it's the NSA contractor's fault for bringing it home. They were using 
the uh, company's antivirus software when it detected a piece of malware attributed to the Equation Group. That was the name of it uh, in 2014. Sometime after that, the contractor disabled Kaspersky, but they're not sure when. Then he turned it on because he had downloaded and installed some malware. This guy should not be a contractor for the NSA. <laughs> he downloaded and installed some malware trying to pirate Microsoft Office. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> the malware dropped from the Trojanized keygen was a full-blown backdoor. So they say, Kaspersky says, it wasn't us. The guy installed a backdoor. Eugene Kaspersky, who is, is you know, pretty well liked in the security community, is said, we... We, we we are not part of the Russian government, and we think that this announcement from Germany was political, not because of any technical, not for any technical basis. This is another one. It's very hard. Can't we believe and him? Russia don't mix, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that's just a practical level. Yeah. I mean, Kaspersky, I've I met him. He he went to he was he was a major fixture at Avos uh, back is. in the day. And and he you know was very good at presenting a portrait of himself as someone whose business depended upon the credibility of their security. Right. But at some point, you lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Right. Eh, I would argue that the way all nations deal with cybersecurity, we'd have the same issue coming looking from the outside in at the U.S. Well, a lot of nations have problems with us. Yeah, we're but not that's why Europe and, and Brazil. We're flea ridden ourselves. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, not me, but the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Kaspersky has been careful not to criticize the Ukraine invasion. Too, um, he he said tweeted recently. He hoped negotiations would lead to a compromise between Russia and the Ukraine. <laughs> nice try, bud. yeah. It's you. That's nice a try. fine line to hoe. They're killing civilians. Nice yeah, try. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. This, 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 there's a few stories. Jason was worried that this was a light news day. There's some stories. There's some. Stories. By the way, by the way, I'm sorry, but he he put in the 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 possible title as Jason does as we go along. Yeah. So take the yachts, not the slacks. It sounds like it's take my pants. <laughs> with my pants. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That may be the title. I don't know. Unless something better comes along. So you saw Saturday Night Live uh, making fun of the fact. <laughs> <laughs> just this, this, this still is enough. Making fun of the fact that the White House invited TikTok influencers <laughs> to a briefing about how they could help with Ukraine. Now, if oh, you're boy. looking at this picture and you're not a, a TikToker, you probably don't know that there is a very famous Asian guy on TikToker who does strange things Okay, with plungers. And that explains it. Yeah. Because I'm like, why does yeah, he have I'm a on TikTok and I had no idea. You I was know, like, you've not I seen his... Is a real uh, person? He started not on TikTok. He started, I think, probably on Instagram or somewhere else. But certainly I've seen a lot of that. But on the other hand... Your TikTok feed, man. I think it's probably a good thing for the White House to reach out to social media influencers. It's good to explain. I mean, I think it's always good to brief people and give them your side of the story and explain what's happening and to provide ways to find more information. I mean, that is never a bad idea. It's I understand Whether a little not, uh, upsetting for <laughs> trained uh, professionals. But. Oh, there's a but. Oh, I was going to say, but you also have to hope that these creators recognize they're being potentially spun, if that makes sense. Oh. I mean, but another way to look at it, another, a butt to your butt, I'll raise your butt, see your butt and raise a butt, <laughs> is that, I should, no, sorry, no, that was not, <laughs> two ladies out of my mouth. Um, your, your however, I'll see your however and, 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 and match your however, is that it also shows respect to yes. the people. I remember when bloggers were allowed into the conventions uh, uh, to yeah. cover the, conven the political conventions, that was a big deal to say bloggers uh, can matter. But you're yeah, right. Yeah, it's totally validating. And I think, I mean, I think ultimately I didn't make fun of the White Like people were making fun of the White House. I was like, why are you making fun? This is a great first step. Yeah. And 
I don't know who they invited or what they were trying to do, but there are like legit news platforms on TikTok. And well, they, they, yeah. they weren't trying. inviting traditional news platforms. They invited influencers. No, but there's like under the desk news, although now they have a deal with the uh, LA Times. I remember um, you mentioning yeah. them before. Under the, de under yeah. the desk news. There's a Ukrainian uh, journalist, Jules uh, Sulzaltsev, who does Good Morning Bad News. He's been doing many brief he said it was kind of like a briefing for kindergartners but he's kind of more up on this the problem is is yeah. the the norms have just disappeared so i mean obviously you brief the newspapers and the t news channels they have their press briefings and, every day and they have regular press briefings but what if there's an influencer who has 10 times the audience of cnn mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like you want to make sure to. that those people aren't saying dumb stuff. Right. So yeah. this is one of them. That's Ellie. Good. This is from the Washington Post story about this. Ellie Zeiler. She's 18. She has 10 and a half million followers. That's <laughs> more than CNN, right? That's more than all the news channels combined. Poor Wolf. And yeah, I know. <laughs> and so, of course, you got to reach out to. And yes, they're not trained professional journalists, so they could be, you know. Spun. Spun. I mean, yep. um, but but at, I don't know. You want to give them information. I think I, it would behoove the White House not to yeah, spin you them. Want them to, yeah, you, you want them to have the facts as you see them. I yeah. mean, that's... I, I'm just skeptical. But you know, this what my job if those, those same influencers take the information that they're given and spin it themselves into some other malarkey because they can, yeah. because they have that kind of reach. Well, that's and that's going that's to what the continue American to press make them does. more viral. That's Fox News in the press room. You know, right, it's, right, it's still yeah. the same old crap that we're dealing with from the smaller. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. I have yeah, I mean, this isn't magic. It's just talking to me. Wait a minute. Let me if you her. believe okay. in. <laughs> <laughs> the power of information and transparency, mm -hmm. you have to look at this and say, that's a positive move to be like, hey, yeah, we're going to tell you what we know and what we're telling professional news people because we know that you have a following. If you choose to go this and take this and go do crazy things with it, maybe you don't get invited back or. Right. But that's so why TikTok the most American thing in the world. Instagrammers. Well, that's an interesting question. I would hope they would do Instagrammers. YouTubers might even be even more bigger, influential. Right? You know, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, John and Hank but Green. TikTok is they're where the they're where the youths are. They're the where youths. the attention is right now. Also, also, a lot of Ukrainian mm -hmm. attention now, too. But yeah, yeah, and YouTube. I guess you can't you can't necessarily get it everywhere, right? I don't know. Well, and mm -hmm. you maybe maybe the White House is kind of like. Well, actually, that doesn't make sense. I was just saying, maybe they don't want to deal with Google or Meta, but they probably really don't want to deal with China. A Chinese guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, do we want to do it with, yeah. Uh, here's, uh, let me, can I play, am I allowed to play a little of this? I don't understand. Why not? It's, it's, it's not a song. It's not music. Is there something even more powerful we can attack him with? Poems. Oh, no, it's that girl. There's one where, uh, you know, they do the TikTok dance, uh, you know, where the five reasons why you shouldn't go to war with. <laughs> we got it. I know <laughs> nothing about either. She does a great Jen Psaki. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's perfect she's everybody. for Psaki. Yeah. He's not a great Biden. No, he's not. No. I agree. Uh, I, yeah. By the way, the, the, the other SNL, I'm not jumping ahead, but just. My favorite SNL was the Amazon Store SNL. I guess we could do that one too. And actually, that was pretty right on. It really. This was. might not have been the best cold open uh, I ever saw, but um, they were mocking the grab and go stores that Amazon has. Let me let me go to the. I'm sure it'll be posted on it's YouTube. Under Amazon. Can I play this again? I feel so nervous. <laughs> it's not music. <laughs> yeah, but you can't. No. Well, how about this? How about this? Well. Cluster them all in the show, and then we'll members, see. The whole thing will get t taken down. <laughs> no, we'll, we're gonna. If, if, if how about this? It's we're gonna play it right now. We're gonna take that out of the main feed because we're, we're nervous. But we will put it and everything we say about it into the club feed. It's line eighty five. This is uh, huh? oh, so. This is a, a parody of the stores Amazon has, as you know, where you go in and you don't have to pay. You By the way, shop where you can just is this a set or is it an actual hey, no, grab a go store? Because it really looks, it looks like the real thing. Legit. Yeah. It's These are all very white people from Seattle, Washington. I just want to point out. <laughs> um. Go ahead, leave. <laughs> just walk out. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he puts a little bit of money on the turnstile. <laughs> Search Amazon Go Store Black Man Trap. <laughs> I'm glad you can laugh, Ant. I am glad you can laugh. Holy cow. I don't know. It's um, not odd, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little too close to home, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's close to home. Do you, would you, no, let's be honest. You're, you, you know, yeah, you're I'm black man. That. Would you go in? No. You're not going to do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not happening, sir. It's a great idea, but nah, nah, bro. No. <laughs> this is a see. This is an example. We live in different worlds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your are your your experience of the world a little different. A little different. Just a little different. But I'm a, I am in a very happy world. I must say that. Yeah, we're glad <laughs> to have you here. And you know, you can just take anything you want from the. I do. Oh, just I leave do. a little tip. There. Except for the coffee <laughs> machine. And I do. The coffee Can't machine. Is coffee machine. Is okay. <laughs> All right. Actually, yeah, we That's we been did this hear week it. In so Google. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, all right, let's take a little break so we can pay for the coffee machine that Anne is going to be taking home <laughs> later with today. With permission. With permission. <laughs> on the record. On the record. Right There's a it. lot of cameras in here, too. That's a, that's a good coffee machine. <laughs> I like the coffee machine. Our Actually, you can't take it because Micah would kill you if you took it. All right, Micah, let's fight, bro. It's you and Micah are the Bring people it. who use it. Because it's you got to turn it on. you got to wait for it to heat up. It's a big deal. Micah, I, try, I, I was doing the Keurig thing, and he said, that's not coffee. Yeah. He and I agree on that. How much is this machine? Let me just ask you. It's about, uh, I think it was about 1800 bucks. Oh, okay, never yeah. mind. I was like, get it for him for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a yeah. That's more than a Thermomix. I mean, my God. <laughs> it's so good, though. Oh. I'm getting you a Thermomix. It's I'm so getting good. you a Breville, Breville coffee maker. And I'm getting you Cacio e Pepe, Jeff. So I was in there this <laughs> morning. Congratulations. 499. 499. I was in there this morning with Mr. Burke, and I, I was you looking for my, my phone because I have the stopwatch on there. Yeah. And I Oh, was, you did you bring the scale? Was it you brought in the no, scale? No, Mr. Nielsen brought the scale, but oh, I'm man. looking for my stopwatch and I'm like, crap, I, I forgot my phone. And then I realized, oh, this machine, it has the time already oh, on there. Oh, man. You know, it, it's just a so, so, machine. So Anthony, too, is one of you. He brought in a scale, so they yes. weigh the coffee. Yes. 18 yeah. grams. And you weigh your water. Oh, you're kidding me. 18 grams, 30 seconds oh, to pull geez. the shot. And they even convert it to she, metric. <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> well, that's how you got to do it. A fine grind. See, and Jimmy, come out with Jimmy the... Carter got it wrong. If he just had coffee involved, <laughs> he would be on the metric system. <laughs> but, she... but daylight savings time. Hey. Not yet. Are you a Marco Rubio okay. fan now, huh? Now how do you feel? He, this has been something Get it done. he's wanted to have done for no, a long time. Why don't time. we just keep it standard time and change the time we do things? Wait, stop. Wait, what? We're going to do an ad this week before we continue on with the show. <laughs> yes. Because I cannot handle Thank you. last week's Thank false you. alarm. <laughs> Thank you. I'm halfway to my kitchen and y'all are like, la, 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 more stories. <laughs> And so you know, folks, before we got on the show, we, I tried to get Leo to do a, a different start. And he almost thought we all thought we were on the show. So it was the same as last week. Are we in a Are we in a show? We never know. I like to keep you off balance. I, you know, that's why we do this live. Oh, we keep, it, keep you off balance. But that's okay. We, we, we <laughs> definitely appreciate this. this go get a snack. Go get some coffee. Go get some cacio e pepe because it's time to talk about IT Pro TV. You, you stay right here because your IT team needs IT Pro TV. They need the skills. They need the knowledge to keep your business running, to keep it successful, to keep it secure. That's what IT Pro TV is all about. IT Pro TV is the best IT training out there for individuals. We talk about that all the time. But I also want to let you know they've got great team training too. And your team will love it. You know how I know? More than 80% of users who start a video on IT Pro TV actually finish it. They watch the whole thing. That's because it's fun. It's engaging. Your team will enjoy learning on the platform. You've got to give your team the, the tools they need to do their job right. You owe it to them. And they will appreciate the education that they're getting from IT Pro TV. Courses are not just entertaining. They're very informative, very binge-worthy. Uh, and, and they'll get new skills they can get new certs. They can recertify. And because the tech industry is always changing, IT Pro TV is always updating their content. 
They've got seven studios running Monday through Friday all day to create new content because there's always new software. There's always new systems. There's new cyber threats. There's new tests, new questions. So you're getting up-to-date content that goes from those studios right into the training uh, library in 24 hours. There's a 5,800 hours worth of training and it, it, covering everything, not just technical skills, but compliance, soft skills too, business skills. You can get all the training, all the certs for your team done in one place. They've got every vendor, Microsoft IT, Cisco training, Linux training, Apple training, security, cloud. They've got it all, and it's all up to date. Plus, you'll love the dashboard you get with the IT Pro TV business plan. You can track your team's results, manage your seats, assign team members, unassign them when they're done, access monthly usage reports. You'll see metrics like logins, viewing time how many tracks they've completed. You'll, you'll know everything that's going on. makes it very easy to manage teams. You can even manage subsets of users. You can say, you, you guys are going to work on this. You guys are going to work on that. Give them customized assignments. You can monitor their progress. You can get a report on how they're using the platform. Make sure it's working for them, that they're using it to its fullest. You can assign full courses, of course, but also individual episodes within courses. And IT Pro TV's transcripts make it easy to find that part of the course that they need to learn about. And with the advanced reporting, you'll know immediately how well your team is doing, whether they're watching them all, whether they're making progress. It's just a great way to train yourself and train your team. Individual plans available, but also team plans. And, you know, <clears throat> we've always talked about 30% off for the individual plans for the life of your active subscription. Well, guess what? We've got 30% off, too, for your IT Pro TV team. That's right. Mention TWIT30, T-W-I-T-3-0, to your IT Pro TV account executive, you'll get 30% off or maybe even more on a business plan for teams from two to a thousand. There are volume discounts too. They start as low as five seats. Go to itpro.tv slash twit right now. Don't forget twit30. Whisper it in uh, your account exec's ear. Twit30. You'll get 30% off or more on a business plan. itpro.tv slash twit. You need this. Your team needs it. It's a, and we've known these guys since they started IT Pro TV. Big fans. ITPro.tv slash twit. And they have great t-shirts. Which you are wearing. It says IT Pro TV and chill. And chill. In the Netflix style. <laughs> oh, did you well, wear that on I'm, purpose? I was, I've been confused about this all show long, and <laughs> Thank you. He did not know. We're going to have to put a... Sponsor hashtag on his head or something. <laughs> Just draw it in with Over his face. Marker. Over his face. <laughs> That's actually an interesting question. I wonder if the FTC would say something about that. If you no, no, I don't think so. Not well, you just FTC. disclosed it right now. Yes, well, it's disclosed. That's yeah. disclosed. Yeah. And look how people have been wearing <laughs> their swag, even interviewed on MSNBC. I know. They never. I'm wearing Funfetti swag. Funfetti oh. is that a brand name? Do you not it, know about Funfetti cake? I. Uh, yeah, but no. I mean, it's like a thing. It's not a no, brand. No, because pie is greater than cake. But oh, it is. It's Pillsbury well, baking. You're, yeah, it is. Oh my brand. God, you're right. It looks just like your sweater. I had no idea. Oh, oh. I didn't know oh, that was take it down because she used the trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe y'all don't know about Hash, confetti. But but wait a minute. Before we have to clarify this, Pillsbury has not given you any money to wear that sweater. Am I right? No, no, no. In fact, they I could. could if you wanted to, money. Pillsbury, wink, wink. <laughs> You're really missing would, out, Pillsbury. We would take it if you offered it. <laughs> Advertise at twit.tv. So uh, on Sunday uh, morning, I got up uh, an hour less sleep because we set the clocks forward. Monday, I was groggy. In fact, every year, the Monday after the change to summertime, which happened early this year in the U.S., it's going to happen later this month in the rest of the world, uh, there are more heart attacks. There are more auto accidents. Uh, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, apparently this has always been an issue for him. <laughs> he picks the big issues. And he got it, it passed on a voice vote unanimously in the Senate to stay on saving time. Now, that's a little controversial. Uh, it it has, is. It has to go through the House and, of course, be signed by the president. But I think there is broad part. <laughs> Nonpartisan support for one thing in Congress it's this. Wow. Stop changing the clocks. Now, the question is Maybe that's a start. What should which we way? which way should we stop? And yeah. Rubio's I, bill anti -DST. says anti-DST. Really? 
Rubio's yes. bill said uh, we would uh, stay on DST in the fall of 2023. In November 2023, we would not go back to night, dark, scary time. Why do you okay. want to keep well, DST, uh, not keep DST? So my issue is that in the winter, which is already a dark and depressing time, the sun literally rises at like eight o'clock here in Seattle because it's so far north mm -hmm. and it sets around 420. And I get the idea of, you know, the extra hour of daylight being at the end of the day, but waking up, like, sorry, not waking up, waking up at my normal time and being expected to do things in, in the dark. dark. See, so I think it comes down to if you're a morning person or a night person. I really do. And I'm a morning person yeah. and it kills me. I'm going to be up for like three hours trying to force my body when it's like. So believe it or not, we tried this in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's a picture from the Washington Post. Well, because of energy. Because of the energy crisis of kids going to school in the dark. And this is why people hated it. And in fact, it didn't last. I remember going to school. Why don't we in the just change the starting twice time about it. of school? There you go. That's a there's a thought. Just 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 move mm -hmm. it. That's all. No, no. In no. 1973, the U.S. stayed uh, decided to stay in daylight saving time for two years. Uh, by the way, this is a fairly new thing. Uh, it started in World War II, right? My grandmother, my Republican grandmother, 1916, used to all the time. Oh, 16. About World God's time versus FDR's time. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> That's how she put it, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, FDR's yeah. It's time. like the Obamacare of that era. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, now I know why Rubio's against it. No more FDR <laughs> time. But there, I mean, our time zone, our time zones are not, are they set by national? No, it's set by longitude. Right. right. Well, so Allegedly. something interesting to know, because Washington state already passed a law that said, hey, we're going to DST time if it ever federally passes. California's done you that could too. Yeah. So when this law happens, all the state, it, it basically gives states a choice. So some states have already passed laws that say That's this happens. In, oh, now no. it's chaos. But, but hold, be on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Now, Arizona, which we all may be familiar with, yes. is on standard time year round because you didn't have to actually, you could have, any of our Anybody states could have been do like, that. No. just not, yeah. yeah. So they did that instead because they were like, all right, we don't want to change the clocks, standard doesn't, time. Doesn't Indiana time. have like slices that go different ways? I feel like they, they, oh, they used to. I think they, they changed that. But I do remember. Because uh, I, my first wife lived uh, right over the border in Ohio, and you, it was very strange oh, that you boy. had these weird time zones so going weird. over a state border, and it was just very strange. So, this just shows you there is nothing not controversial in the whole world. Clearly, because <laughs> yes. if anything, you would think this I a mean, unanimous vote in the Senate that the, uh, you this know, is what they can do. They can't do anything else that actually matters no. in the world. This is what they the can American do. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine immediately issued a statement cautioning, cautioning that a move to permanent daylight saving time overlooks potential health risks associated with that time system. Standard time, they said, for so many scientific and circadian rationales, Basically, now, it'll be dark when now, you're trying to get up. Now we're bringing out the big guns. Circadian rationales and public safety reasons should really be what permanent time is set to. Because permanent time is based on our time zone. So our bodies will, our bodies adjust already with the time oh, well, they, change. Yeah, we get now. used to so, it. So, yeah. yes and no. So, like, living so far up here now, I, like, in the winter, mm -hmm. it, like, deep as dark as winter, at, like, 8 o'clock, my butt is out of bed. It's hard to get out of bed, but the best way to like make it like, well, get you I feeling throw like up human in the curtains. being is to go out. Yeah, hold on, get some is sunshine. to walk out for like five minutes into yeah. the daylight, and yeah. you have to do that. Yeah, otherwise you're like this. No, no. When I get up, I throw open the curtains, and you're right. If it were dark out. Oh, I thought you said you throw mm -hmm. up in the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how the night before went. That also sounds unhealthy. But, no, I, I throw <laughs> open the curtains open. to let open the sun the shine in like it is in your right. office right now, Jeff. And that's a great way to wake up. And you're right. You should probably go outside. And well, why do we never hear any of these controversial stories in the state of Alaska? Their time so is... People move there... Things. 
and frankly, Bainbridge Island too, have to deal with the fact that they're higher up at the latitude and they're not going to have much sun. I'm sorry. That's just life. Welcome to Helsinki. Yeah. <laughs> Move to, you know, Brazil if you want it better. So, <laughs> so where, yeah, where is Seattle latitude? I love those maps. That well, ironically, it's, it's, it's your senator, Patty Murray, who co-sponsored this with oh, Marco yeah. Rubio. Patty Murray said, the Senate has finally delivered on something Americans all over the country want. And I will agree with her on this, to never have to change their clocks again. Right. Let's not, not change them, but what do not we not leave agree. it at, right? You know what you could do if you don't want to change your clocks ever again, y'all? Just make every clock an internet-connected clock. Make it a different it time. by magic. <laughs> you still have yeah, to that's, yeah, that's already happening. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it's not the actual physical act of changing the clock, <laughs> right. I don't like. No. I'm just saying, if that's your issue, we can solve that today. I just don't want it to be oh, a different time when the I wake up. The queen of IoT has spoken. Yeah, we have clock changers. <laughs> Actually, you know, um, completely off topic, but Shocking. Buckingham Palace has a, a brigade of clock changers. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Um, I read this somewhere. Let me see if I can find... I would like that on my resume. Royal clock changer. <laughs> yeah, they... Uh, I think there's... Uh, there are 450 clocks at Windsor Castle. Good Lord. There are 600 clocks at Buckingham Palace. And someone has the gall to And ask none of them is. are automatic, okay? Wow. So, Queen Elizabeth's palaces have over 1,500 clocks, and they all need to be reset. A whole team of conservators is required for this massive horological undertaking. It is quite the horological undertaking. Here's a picture of a horologist looking at a clock. <laughs> <laughs> you want another one? This was my job growing up when I was. Here's yeah. another one. The this guy has a very serious. I gotta say, yeah, he's got a monk's tonsure. He's he's definitely yeah. These guys, look at this. They're gonna change all these freaking clocks. Every Amazon. one of them. They don't change. Well, there's a, there's a there's a watch store, expensive watch store in New York where they make a big deal about how they that that night they change all the watches. Uh, I put on the in the in the in the Twitch chat the map of the equivalencies. What si what major city is Se Seattle equivalent to in latitude across the world? Vladivostok. Paris. Yeah, we're we're actually the farther Paris. north than like parts of Maine and. But stuff. Paris is very far north. I didn't realize that. I know Berlin Europe is, is up in that's Canada. that whole thing. Yeah. Europe's only warm and habitable because of the Atlantic current thing. What's that called? Coffee? No, it's the thing that we're worried what? it's going to shut down. Ah. It's a it's a current over the ocean. Yeah, the um the uh, uh, Gulf Stream. Jet stream? Thank you. Gulf Stream. Um, Gulf Stream. So Gulf Stream? Yeah. So San and Francisco. We're worried it's going to shut down. Let's see. That's all. We are, uh, Seattle is about Paris. Portland's a little south of that. San Francisco, oh yeah, we're, we're on the, the Costa del Brava. We're a very nice, warm. Well, where Fargo is. Fargo is, I like where San Francisco is that in Ukraine? Is. I don't know where that is. I really couldn't pinpoint Ukraine on a map. I think that's Poland, maybe. No, that's Let's Ukraine. See. Fargo's in Ukraine. No, no, Ukraine's to the right. Ukraine's, Ukraine, Ukraine's <laughs> right next to Russia. That's the issue, Leo. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So Winnipeg. Yeah, remember Winnipeg's that? in Winnipeg Ukraine. Winnipeg is Lviv. Jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the only reason we're laughing is, well, there, there's no reason to be laughing. We should be very serious. Denver um, is in southern Italy. Denver is in southern Italy. See, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, Texas. At all. It always made me laugh because Texas was like my Austin was like in line with Morocco, and I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. And displaying anyway. Facebook has a TikTok now. They do. That's the surprise, stupidest surprise. story ever. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> I'm the one what are who they calling it? bookmarked it. They're calling it Facebook TikTok. No, they, they're not. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Facebook. See. And look at all the followers it has. That's what's fascinating. 21,000 followers. Oh, they have a... T I thought they launched I know. Their isn't own that confusing? Yeah. It's That's me too. Oh. That's, That's why very confusing. I clicked on the story. Yes, me too. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Facebook has an account on TikTok. Boom. Well played, tech, tech Crunch. Well played. Well played. Editors of Tech Crunch, yeah. I should say. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg says NFTs are coming to Instagram. That mm. seems like a terrible idea. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Instagram users will be able to, quote, mint things within the environment. 
Now you can abuse and rip off people on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do, is this just like so you can show your? But that's the thing. People, NFTs on? No, no. Mark says we're working on bringing NFTs to Instagram in the near term. You sound like ninety-year-old Mark. <laughs> Yeah, but wait, what does that mean? Like, you know, is that like... I'm not ready to kind of announce exactly what it's going to be today, but over oh. the next several months, the ability to bring some of your NFTs in, hopefully over time, to be able to mint things within that environment. Oh, okay, so I could mint them. You All could. Right, well... Yes, that's the idea. You yeah. could. I, I don't get it. Well, I mean, right now, all those gas fees millions. going to other people, they got to get those gas fees coming in yeah, to their want, Facebook coffers. To wet their beaks. Right. That's what you're saying. So uh, remember, Facebook started a cryptocurrency DM, which failed. It, yeah. They, they, fold, they shuttered it. They folded it. Um, they have a cryptocurrency wallet now called Novi. Okay. N -O -V -I. But who doesn't have a crypto wallet? Well, I have one, but I can't access it. Everybody who's anybody <laughs> yeah. has a wallet. So I guess the idea is you would, I don't know, you'd put your NFT in your wallet. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't get it because there's, a, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of NFT artists out there on Instagram, sh quote, sharing their NFTs on Instagram. Well, you could put a picture and say, hey, that's not what this is. No. This would be, an, instead of OpenSea, you'd use Face, you'd use Instagram. You'd use your Novi wallet. And, All right. So that's... So you're linking... It's just a way to make money. Service. It's a way to make money, right? Okay. It's NFTs in the metaverse too, right? Okay. So yeah. that's what he wants. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but by the way, Zuckerberg spoke at, uh, by video at South by Southwest. Yeah. I saw basically no discussion of it. Sounds riveting. There's fewer people at South by Southwest. I, thank goodness, have not been, like, there's just fewer South by news in general because I don't think there, may, there aren't many. Uh, surprisingly, there. Yeah. There, you're, you're right. I mean, that would be, in the years gone by, that would have right, been a big story. Mm -hmm. um, the last time something that people Zuck about was at Ukraine, South by Southwest, it? he got in a lot of trouble. Did he? No, I'm sorry. Sarah Lacey, who interviewed him. Oh, I remember that because she kind of flirted with him. I was there. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. She did not flirt with him. Well, that was no, this. She didn't. she didn't. Oh, that was the kind of story was she was. Yeah. Let me. Making the, googly the eyes. Sexism was showing. Yeah. Okay. I like but it. She also, this was early Mark hating time. So she also just wasn't as tough on him as people thought she should have been. Uh, yeah. Twitter has That's where I met him. NFT connection. Now that I think about oh. it, if you're on the iOS app, you can connect your crypto wallet that has your NFTs displayed in it and use that as your uh, avatar, I believe. Uh, someone may want to fact check me, though. And Miss Stacy, do you think Twitter would have had a wallet if Mr. Dorsey was still there? He was all into crypto. Right. You know, it, no, it's an interesting question, man. Very interesting question. Well, but is, is that going to compete with, with Stripe? Oh, uh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Um, conflict of interest, whatever you want to call it. Little disappointed. Google has announced Google I.O. May 11th to 12th, and it will be online. Square. Square. Not Stripe. Square. Sorry. Online. Not. Maybe online? No, in person. Online. Oh, well, you know oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Join well, IO. Okay, yeah. I'm wrong. I'm is wrong. A, is that a seat map? that in your history books, folks? I can't cancel this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I, first, I have to say the site used cookies. Okay, oh, got yeah, that. Got now I can close that. Now I can read Join IO live from Shoreline and online. Ah. Oh. Lovely. I want to go to that. Lovely. Oh, Jason, are you going to go? Mr. Oh, we Howell? have to always figure out who's got to use the real life ticket and all that stuff. I won't be here that week. I'll just tell you that right now. Where are you going to be May 11th and 12th? I Somewhere will be fun? in Las Vegas. Oh. Ooh. Doing a, an event? Doing an event on the industrial IOT. Yeah. Ooh. It won't let me into it. Y'all are very sweet. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this on the front at io.google? Uh, this is a clock, but oh. is it is it a game? Is it? Oh, I thought that was a stage. How, to tell the 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 how you tell the time with the clock? No. 
Ooh, it makes makes music too. So days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Someone get wind to dial on the horn. So the yellow one is hours, the blue one is days. The little tiny dots have to be days. Pink no? dots are minutes. Well, no, there's a color. Well, if it's actually counting. Oh, there is all the going outside fast circle. Are there 55 yeah. of them? Yeah, one. That's a lot to count, ma'am. Two. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, news There day. are 18 hours. Look, just I just oh. counted the 18 hours. Y'all are fine. Oh, boy. Why, I did, just, you, why did you screw it up? <laughs> <laughs> there, it's back the way it was. So why, when I click the dot, does it all... See, this is... They do this. They have a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. For Google right. I.O. own. Why I would never get hired at Google? <laughs> yeah, my mind doesn't work that no, way. No, you would be a great um, quality assurance tester. Yeah, like, what the hell is this? <laughs> You're breaking things. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, I guess we'll cover that. We'll do the uh, we'll do the keynote May 11th, and uh, we'll send somebody, probably uh, probably Jeff and Jason, I'm thinking. Maybe you too, Ant, if we get enough I might come out. Tickets. I'd love to go down there. It's fun to go. It's really fun to go. You haven't been to Idaho, probably. I haven't been to Idaho. Yeah, yeah, you should go. Oh, Idaho's really great. Went, People yeah. are really nice. I went to one of the extensions down there several years ago in San Francisco, but never like on campus in Mountain View. Uh, if I nice were uh, using Vimeo, I'd be a little perturbed right now. Vimeo, mm -hmm. which is owned by IAC, right? Uh, Barry Diller's... Uh, IAC, which is a big uh, Hollywood now agency. Owns Time Inc. and oh, um, that's right. And Meredith, they yeah. shut down those magazines. Apparently, uh, Money Crunch yep, don't IAC. know. Uh, they're going to start charging people more for Vimeo hosting. Um, this is an article from The Verge quoting Lois Van Barl, a digital artist from the Netherlands who joined Vimeo 13 years ago has uh, a number of videos up there. She says, I was already paying $200 a year, which I think is pretty expensive, but I thought, well, it's a quality platform. Mm -hmm. She had 117 subscriber-only videos so far. She uses it for her subscriber-only Patreon mm -hmm. content. Each one only gets around 150 views on average. Her most viewed video, 815 views, so not driving not a lot of right. traffic. She got a notice from Vimeo on March 11th saying her bandwidth usage was within the top 1% of Vimeo users. Doesn't reflect very well on that, Vimeo. Right. That scared me. And if she wanted to keep hosting her content on the site, she'd have to upgrade to a custom plan. Her quoted price, $3,500 a year. But worse, she was only given a week to either pay for it, decrease her bandwidth usage, or leave Vimeo. Do you Vimeo's know how many great. independent filmmakers are out there oh. using... Video. Absolutely, it's a ton oh, yeah. of them of high quality because it's the best quality. Yeah, and they're getting. I'm sure they're getting way more than a couple hundred views a month. You think they're paying thousands of dollars a month to Vimeo? Vimeo is actually deleting <laughs> uh, files. Uh, Channel Five, a popular account doing Man on the Street style interviews, got this uh, message in January in a post on Patreon titled "Vimeo is holding our catalog hostage." That's crazy. Channel 5 creators say that on returning from a trip, they saw their videos disappearing from the Patreon feed, resulting in hundreds of angry messengers and the loss of more than 500 subscribers. Mm -hmm. The quote from Vimeo for their new custom plan, $7,000 a mm. year, and you either Vimeo upgrade or you move it. spun off by IAC, which might explain part of this. Ah, they want to make it worth some. I didn't see any other comment from Vimeo regarding the the percentage what, what did they say she was in the top one percent one percent yeah there's 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 no way 800 views is is not a lot of views when there's a well, ton I think there's, of there's thousands of accounts that have been abandoned for years and years and years and years and still and getting a ton of views. oh yeah i have videos there <laughs> i now, wonder if my vimeos are gone go check uh, okay, this partly proceed. comes from the fact that vimeo is pivoting away from the perception that they are kind of an independent youtube right. alternative right what they really want to be is a B2B solution uh, okay. for, for, for businesses to post their videos. He's um, one of the, uh, uh, the CEO of Vimeo, Anjali Sood, said back in February, today we are a technology platform, not a viewing destination. 
We're a B2B solution, not the indie version of YouTube. So that's okay. the problem. It's just kind of Vimeo has changed from what it was to something else. And actually, you I've seen see this coming hard. for a while. That's you fine to pivot, but yeah. something's not right with those numbers. At least not I with agree. that quote, I should say. Oh, my video is still on Vimeo. How many Nobody views? go watch it. Nobody's watching it? Oh, I said nobody go watch it. Um, only 845. <laughs> Yeah, but that puts you in the top one percent. Top one percent, then. No, because I only have <laughs> one video there. <laughs> Jeez. I have one video. It's been there six years, and only eight hundred and forty-five views. Well, now you now you've got me wondering. Let me just log in real quickly and see. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me uh, me wondering. I can add. See, it well, really does look like B two B. Add team members. Modern tools for modern businesses. Um, here is uh, a video. I posted five years ago called Segwaying. Let me see how many views. Wait a minute. Oh, you've got to hit the banner. Oh, I hate these things. Go away. Go away. It's new and improved. No, no, Boy, no. Boy, that looks like B2B. Yeah, yeah. Look at that slow motion. Ooh, look at you in that 120. Boom. So fancy. <laughs> fancy. Boom. I well, remember this. If you like it Do slow. you still have it, Leo? Yeah. you still have your Segway? Uh, yeah, the batteries died. I got to get new batteries. If anybody knows how to get new batteries here and it's going from slow to fast, this is a time lapse uh, through the streets of London. Look at that. I mean, that's, I don't. That's where do you see how many beautiful. views you've got? Video actions. Move. Got it. Got it. Got it. How do I? That's I a nice know. video, sir. That's kind of cool, huh? Oh, it was when Hyperlapse first says, came out. Yeah. Ina Fried says that the Google I.O. is going to be, press is going to be online. Oh, man. Whoa. Oh, man. Right. Oh, let's pan it then. So I was in a double-decker bus oh, right in the nice. front, and I put, and I had hyperlapse from, it was Facebook, yeah. right? Or Instagram, I can't remember. I think it was, it was, no, I think it was Facebook. Facebook, Facebook. and I, and I yeah. put, plastered the phone up against the window, and then we got to drive through rush hour. In a double decker it's bus. It's so smooth. Look that, at the cyclists. Well, that really was what's good. cool about hyperlapse, right? Yeah. Look at all those people on the street. I can't, I can't cope. Oh my God, they're not wearing masks. Run. <laughs> this is 28 days later. Look at all the London cabs. Looks too. no different from Manhattan. I figured and all those people some, on the street, some, so. you know, 100 years from now, this will be on some site, in, you know, on Mars, and they'll say, we've, we've, we've got a 4K copy of London <laughs> in the 1850s. So I don't see where you see how many people. Yeah, no, your view Scroll count's down? not showing. Yeah, my view count shows. Where my is, my screen did not look like this screen at all. Where does yours show up, though? They've already uh, converted you to the B2B platform. Yeah, I'm, you know, see. I might actually pay for this. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. It says come back to Vimeo Plus and save 25%. My here, I can't share my. Can I share my screen? For no, you? don't share no. your screen. But just where is it? I don't like. Here's when we moved into the brick house. Mine's so mine is right beneath my name as the creator. I get play. I get the triangle play sign, and it yeah, says so eight forty five. I get the hearts and the collections and the comments. This is before we moved in in twenty eleven. I've been trying to figure out where the daggum brick house was, and Mr. Howell just told me today oh. where it was. Oh. I was thinking, I was way off on, I thought it was like on Boulevard. Look how look how bad this looked. <laughs> we really fixed it up. There's our, uh, there's our uh, Roger Ambrose, our set designer, and Jim, and um, the, the, the builders. Yeah, it was, that was fun. Memories. Memories. That was the basement. That's the basement. The Burke So I, I don't know why I don't see... Uh, maybe I have like some... You're on the B2B plane. You know, I, I sit on top I to come back. I can send you a link. Oh, you know what? I'm not logged into my platform. Oh, That's why. if you log in, you don't see. Here. That seems odd. That's really weird. Yeah, you should see it, if anything. Huh. Anyway, yeah, so maybe if you log out. Oh, look, mashed what? potato found me. Mashed potato found you. Yes, my my three <laughs> Vimeo videos. <laughs> mashed potato found you. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I have zero uh, views. In the chat room. I have zero <laughs> views. Put, That's put why. Link in. I have zero. It says zero. Why is there a lock next to the Segway one? Did you just put it there as backup? Oh, it's private. 
It's private. That's why. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I shouldn't have showed that. I probably didn't have permission. Oh. Well, if you need to, you can show mine and see. I still don't see Brrr. your view count. And I'm looking at yours right now, Stacy. Okay, let me see. see. Okay. Stacy's Vimeo. So Stacy, I'm trying to go to, I'm not logged in either. I go to, I, I, I search for Leo's London video and I can't scroll up to see how many views it has. Yeah, so I don't know. It doesn't, God, this is like, Vimeo is changing. You have to click on a video to click. So if you click on that video, oh, scroll your, down. Yours looks really, no, Alexa, I'm scrolled all the way down. Scroll. Dogs sound like. Oh, it doesn't. No, it's not showing it. Oh, that is so weird. That is, yeah. that's not even what mine looks like. And I'm, and I'm not logged in. And that's not how you spell Higginbotham. What? No, All right, let's take it. <laughs> That's how you spell I was like, I made this account. I should know. <laughs> it's fake, clearly. It's Anastasia W. So Higginbotham. apparently, according to a mime artist in the chat room. No. Uh, <laughs> Leo's tour says 27 views. Okay, we'll take your word for it. That's probably about right. Because we know, well, yeah, I mean, that was a long time ago. I don't ever publicize it. You also it. put no it on, on, on YouTube, I would imagine, right? Yeah, probably. You did. I saw it on YouTube originally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's take a little break because I want to tell people who are going back to work, it's going to be okay. It's now the whole thing is hybrid work, right? Some of you are in the office. We had a lot of people in the office today because it was Wednesday lunch day, uh, which was really nice. But there's still a lot of people who don't want to come in and want to stay home. And that's the future of work, I think, is this kind of hybrid thing. But that means your conference rooms have to be kind of considering this. And audio is a big deal. If some of the people are at home, some of the people are at work, everybody needs to be heard clearly. You don't want people straining. You don't want them shouting. But you also want them to be comfortable. You want them to be able to move around. That's why you want Nareva. Many people with their conference rooms, they go, just, you know, I, I guess, you know, if you don't think about it, oh, we got to go get the audio visual company in and they're going to measure, they're going to do sound tests, they're going to run wires, we're going to have microphones, we're going to have speakers, we're going to have all kinds of DSPs and stuff and it's going to cost a lot of money and they're going to have to come in and tweak it every once in a while. And that's expensive. The, this is, it, the, the, the industry has, has changed. Things are changing. And the best thing that's happened to conference room audio is Nureva, N-U-R-E-V-A, with their patented microphone mist technology. Nureva makes it very simple. You just put in a what it looks like a sound bar. It's a speaker. It's got some integrated microphones, but it fills the room with thousands of virtual microphones using computational audio. So there are no dead zones. Everyone can be heard clearly, no matter where they're facing, no matter where they're standing. And you don't have to have a technician come and calibrate it. In fact, you can install this yourself for a really big room. Put a couple of speaker bars in. Meeting participants, class participants can talk and move naturally in the space. And the people who aren't there won't be second-class citizens. They'll be able to hear exactly what's going on. And by the way, it's continuously calibrating. So they're always ready with optimized audio. You don't need an outside technician. Your IT department can handle it. Your IT department will love this because they don't even have to go from room to room. With the Nerevas, you'll get a Nereva console, which means IT can monitor, manage, and adjust the systems from anywhere, no matter how many rooms you have. Nereva's installation is simple, a 30-minute DIY job. If you can hang up a sound bar, you can install a Nereva. So you're going to save on installation. You're going to save on cost you're going to save on maintenance and you're going to love the quality you get with this microphone mist technology so really ask yourself before you just do the obvious instead of going with that costly complicated traditional system make the leap to simple to economical nureva it actually works better great audio simplified n-u-r-e-v-a nureva.com in fact, they even invite you on the web page. Compare us to the competition, please. Nareva, this is a perfect example of Silicon Valley finding a better way to do something. And, you know, it, it, I know it's a little inertia. we got to get people to, to try it. But I think if you do, you'll realize how much better it is. Nareva.com. Thank you, Nareva, for supporting This Week in Google. May I add in? Yes. So I've, I've, I've had to be teaching the first seven weeks so far hybrid. because Some of the students are coming in by video. How's that been? It is hard, yeah. and I wish I had Nareva. Because we got a you know an expensive little pod. Yeah, they, but I'm yeah, also wearing I hate a mask. Those. Yeah, I hate and those. So trying to and students are in the back because we're trying to stay distant, 
and try to be heard by the people on the video. It's it's and I also came to a faculty meeting by video where half the faculty were there and half weren't. I really came to appreciate the difficulty of the students because the now you know audio, how hard it is. Yeah. No, oh, it's just it's just boring. Are you using like a polycom in the middle of the table? Basically, is that, not even oh. in the front of the room. Yeah. It's not, oh no 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 <laughs> no 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 no. This, this is the way to do it. Yes. Uh, Google, I didn't realize this. Google yesterday had a big event. If I had known, we would have covered it. Although uh, Paul said it was kind of boring. It was their Stadia. Well, he's a Microsoft guy. So. Well, he said it's it was very Stadia. kind of. <laughs> oh, Stadia, yeah. It was the Google for Games Developer Summit. Uh, and it was kind of stiff. But one thing Google did announce, which is kind of interesting, is they, they really wanted white label it for other companies. So Stadia, which you probably are familiar with, is Google's streaming gaming service. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it doesn't compete well, I think, with Microsoft's offering or uh, NVIDIA's offering because you have to buy the game full retail price, but you never own, own it. Mm -hmm. It's you buy it 60 bucks, but it's sitting on their servers. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a Stadia subscriber, you lose access to it. So that's, I think, a little annoying. It does work well. It's, the back-end technology is good, especially if you have this special Stadia controller, which uses Wi-Fi Direct, so it uh, doesn't have latency or not as much latency. And so it's yeah, a better way to... Okay, that's better. Yeah, it's a better way to play. <laughs> um, so this year, Google's going to let any... So there's going to be some changes here. They're going to have white-label partners. In fact, AT&T is the, is the first one. So AT&T is going to have uh, games that they offer to their customers on their phones using the Stadia backend, but it'll be white-labeled. It won't say Google, it won't say mm -hmm. Stadia, or it might in little letters, I don't know, but it, it's an AT&T product. I thought this sounded familiar. This was reported back in February of this year. Oh, yeah, the white-label. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they also will let any Stadia game developer offer an instantly accessible free trial of the game, and you don't even need a Stadia account to play it. So you click on YouTube or a search ad or social media, and you can play the mm -hmm. game. Th this was something like that that they promised they're finally getting around to doing. Um, people will be able to browse the Stadia store for those trials, too. So you'll be able to find free games or free trials. Um, even if you don't have a Stadia account, you can browse the store. This is really interesting. They're going to offer a tool or a number of tools like DXVK, which will let developers port games written with Unreal Engine or Unity to Stadia. So that's a very big deal for uh, developers because they don't want to write a sep second kind of version of the game uh, if, they don't, if they can avoid it. So it's really, they're really pitching developers and I think that that's, you know, you got to get them before you can get uh, the gamers. Mm -hmm. and so there I you have still, it. I still get emails about my free monthly game or whatever I it think is. I have Stadia but I I don't have it anymore um, I just logged in just to confirm that I don't have it and it says yeah get Stadia Pro right so maybe I don't maybe I cancel mm. yeah sounds sounds like it's exciting okay. you too <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's the appropriate response to Stadia from everybody I think yeah it's or too bad I really response. wanted it to work because I did too. Uh, you know, as a Mac user and a Linux user, a lot of games are not ported to those right. platforms. To be able to play PC games mm -hmm. in the browser is a great idea. I have one person um, that that seems to be standing behind, it, and he's a Twig listener, uh, Mr. Leo, not Laporte, but he 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 totally digs the Stadia experience yeah. with his phone and everything. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Meta told workers on Friday, you're going to have to do your own laundry. Where's my violin? I mean, I, Where that I feel for go? these people because it always sucks when someone takes away a cool privilege, but it's kind of like people who are like 28 complaining that their family took them off their like Netflix or something. <laughs> like, but it's just more dastardly than that. Oh, gosh. They um, are are starting dinner at 6.30, but the last bus is 6 or some such thing. Yeah, yeah the, apparently there that. were complaints that people were packing up big to-go boxes and running out to the bus. <laughs> Run! <laughs> so, uh, Which I totally see people doing. Of course. Why not? They're giving away the meal. I, I, I don't want to stick around work to eat it, so thank you. When I worked at Time, Inc. low many years ago, they used to have dinner on closing nights because people would work through the night because we were all macho. Yeah. yeah. And, and you'd also get a, 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 a dark car home 
right. after a certain hour. Yeah. yeah. So people would, would, would wait as long as they could, stretch out every edit, drink as they also stocked the editor's offices. They with had booze. a bar cart. Mm -hmm. I think it's important exactly. that people know that Time Inc. Yes. had a bar cart that bar roved cart. around the offices. Well, actually, Time Magazine, because they were higher class than we were. People, they just stocked the editor's credenzas. The editors had credenzas. Oh. This seems like, so counterproductive. <laughs> Sounds like my old IT Fortune, I missed the bar cart by a year. <laughs> by a year, y'all. It just seems like, do you really want your writers to be drunk? Oh, they, There's um, this whole mythology about, like, yes. drunk writers. Thank you, Truman Capote. Uh, I, I don't oh, drunk editors at Time Inc. It just seemed they like, would go. They would go to dinner at the steakhouse and then come back. And you did not want your copy edited uh, then. You did not. Who wants to even work when they're lunch drunk? Came from somewhere. I don't understand I don't the the appeal of it at all. We had a yeah, guy who had a break, a, a serious bad breakdown on the 29th floor. Hmm. He threw his chair out the window, broke the window, the nice. building. Luckily, it was over another building that's below. Yikes. Threw his ATEX terminal out, which dangled by the wires. <laughs> what? Um, was taken to uh, the ER and then into the loony you know, bin. The detox tank, right? And guess what the editors did who took, who came back? They brought him a the bottle. Hospital? They drank. They, well, I got to have a drink. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is what I'm writing about now. But apparently, uh, at Microsoft, they call it the Balmer Peak. This is from XKCD number 323. <laughs> this is a graph of blood alcohol concentration. Right between 0.12 and 0.16, there is a peak in programming skill that cannot be achieved any other way. Called the Balmer Peak, it was discovered by Microsoft in the late 80s. The cause is unknown, but somehow a blood alcohol content between 0.129% and 0.138% confers superhuman programming ability. However, it's a delicate effect requiring careful calibration. You can't just give a team of coders a year's supply of whiskey and tell them to get cracking. <laughs> Has that ever happened? Remember Windows ME? I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, this may be apocryphal. <laughs> Google employees are unhappy. Well, they're unhappy too. They're, Facebook employees are unhappy. They're unhappy. And employees unhappy, and nobody in the country with is pay, care. promotions, and execution. They get killed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I execution. would prefer to be hanged if you don't mind. In the annual Google Geist survey, Google workers gave their employer particularly poor marks, according to CNBC, on how compensation compares to pay for similar jobs at other companies. This is just a trend worldwide. This yeah. anti work trend. The yeah, great it's resignation. Not just Google. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, a lot of it is because of inflation and, and housing prices in the Bay Area are insane. So it doesn't matter how much you make. You can't afford a house. I got I got to tell you, I appreciate y'all buying lunch today here at Twit. Does mean a lot, sir. Because, boy, everything is so it's much expensive. more expensive yeah. right now. It is. Good it is. Grief. Especially gas. Yeah. 46% yeah. uh, of survey respondents said their total comp compensation is competitive compared to similar jobs at other companies. Mm -hmm. That's 12% down, though. 46% is fewer than half. 56% say their pay is fair and equitable. That's a drop in eight points. 64% of employees said their performance is reflected in their pay, that they work as hard as they are paid. My performance is reflected in their pay. Everyone always tells me that they actually work very hard. I'm sure they do. A Google spokesperson said, we know our employees have many choices about where they work. So we ensure they're very well compensated. It's a lot cheaper to keep an employee happy than it is to train a new one. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I think this might just be a general cultural phenomenon as much as a Google. It's also, it's also dare I say it, generational. You sound what like a you, boomer. Oh, hold on. What makes you say hold it's generational? On there. Okay, boomer. <laughs> Let's hear this. I knew I was going to get crap for that. <laughs> and she just Stacey leaves. left. <laughs> she says, I'm out. Okay, sorry. No, I, I was reacting. I just had to let my dog out. So uh, my reaction <laughs> Is that what you was... call it when you scream into the pillow? You're letting your dog out? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Get off! I got it! Um, it might be generational only in the sense that people who are younger and recognize that they're not going to get to the point 
that basically all of this is BS. When you wake up and realize that, mm -hmm. why would you keep this job? Mm -hmm. I mean, and put yourself in their shoes. Um, you don't even have houses yet, Jeff. They can't get houses because the housing prices are insane. Oh, it it insane. blew my mind to see the RVs the first time I went to the Google campus. People living in the parking here. lot. Yeah. They're in the daggum yeah. parking well, Palo lot. Palo Alto. Yeah. All around Palo Alto. I'm like, on, on, on El Camino Real. There's campers, both sides, up and down. I went Hello there Alton. to meet a friend um, that, that loves Twit, and I thought I was in the wrong spot because of all the RVs in the parking lot. It's like, this can't be Google. And he's like, yeah, this is where people live because it's cheaper to do this. You want to get your eyes opened, uh, follow uh, Reddit's anti-work subreddit slash r slash anti work. <laughs> work yeah i mean oh, it's just anti work anti work okay i thought you said ant eats work here's a tweet from burger king you're beautiful you're loved you matter don't forget it and then from a response from low voter turnout <laughs> you pay people eight dollars an hour mcdonald's near me pays 16 dollars an hour even my daughter's looking at that and going yeah maybe i'll work there i was like you're gonna smell like french fries <laughs> and she's like that's awesome <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, I you know I don't think it's I, it, maybe it's generational in the sense that this generation got a raw deal, but how so? Because uh, our generation, Jeff and my generation, were able to work <laughs> jobs and get paid enough to buy a home and build a family and send the kids right. to college. And, and now we're sticking around and not retiring and we're not making any room for the people who follow. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've created policies and you vote against any sort of affordable housing or like I see the people okay, here that. where I live. Okay. There's that. And yeah, I took I out loans say, in college, but it was a total of $16,000. Yeah. Okay. You know, I was going to say you still work just as hard as everybody else did. It's not a function today. of, but I see there's other these things. These people are working hard. It's, it's they're working even they're harder. They're just not getting anywhere, and they're yeah. not getting as much. Other things yeah. in play. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it doesn't even at that point you look around and you're like, why am I working so hard? Mm -hmm. Screw it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Google's sponsoring F1, the McLaren cars. Ooh, <gasps> that's some money. Look at that. It says Android Ooh, on the fairing there. Mm. And look at it. The at wheels have chrome hubcaps, the chrome colors. Don't Isn't that show cool? that to the Google employees, though. Exactly. Official partner of the McLaren Formula One team and the uh, McLaren e e Extreme E team, which is their electric uh, F1. Oh, yeah. Y'all, the computing inside the F1, Google could bring. Plus, they're going to get it. Hopefully, all they the push data. that team onto GCP and they'll get like all Ooh. sorts of cool things. What's yeah. GCP? I mean, yeah. Google Cloud. Uh, Google Compute. Okay. Their cloud. Um, McLaren Racing. Is McLaren's that Daniel? The, Daniel Ricardo and um, uh, uh, Lance Stroll. Uh, I'm sorry, Lando Norris. Oh, not Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll has got his own money. Uh, <laughs> Lando, Daniel Ricardo, who's great. Lando Norris is great. So uh, that'll be fun watching McLaren uh, race with the. I love the hubcaps or whatever they call those. I love that. No caps, yeah, if they put hubs, some LEDs on those, hubs. that would be amazing too. Yeah. Just so I wonder how they do it so that if it spins, it stays a solid color. I wonder, hmm, that's interesting. That's uh, a photograph, says, sir. Oh, no, it's a picture. It's a photograph, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> how do they do Let's that? Let's talk about deep fakes. <laughs> that car isn't moving. How do they do that? <laughs> but it looks like it's moving. That's that's called a great pan with the awesome shutter speed. But there. I feel like there, <laughs> there maybe they will do something with those, yeah, you're right, not hub caps, but those hubs. To make it look like it's standing still. Well, if they're going fast enough, yeah, I guess it will. Yeah, I don't know. This is where the ant sir comes in so handy because he could have said, <laughs> "You dope." It's a photo dummy. <laughs> you dope. Instead, he said, "You it's a photo dunce. sir." <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, oh, by the way, congratulations to Pete Davidson. Finally, found a way to get away from Kanye. He's go <laughs> he's going up uh, in Blue Origin. Worst move ever. Because now Kanye can say, "Hey, you, he ain't even on the planet right now." Let me move <laughs> in. Of course, uh, this is in the uh, you know kind of sort of uh, into space. Mm -hmm. um, Marty Allen will go on March twenty third. Isn't that a comedian? From yeah, the old days. With no, the no, it can't hair? be that Marty Allen with the, with the frizzy hair. <laughs> That's who I thought, oh, too, but then I realized he must be 100. It couldn't be that, Marty Allen. 
Must be. You just, you you just squirreled you, you that quickly, really? This, <laughs> this, so this guy? This guy? That guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marty Allen. There's got to be some good video He's of dead. Marty Allen. Not only dead, but his we hair isn't as good as it used to be. Um, oh, come on, Stacy. You have no. Oh man, that picture. Ooh, <laughs> ouch. It Ooh, was literally ten seconds. Let's not make fun of this fella. All right. It was literally ten seconds, and you squirreled into another another subject. Marty Allen. Well, who is Marty Allen? And well, he mentioned he, Marty Allen. Who is he? And we both said we old farts said it can't be our Marty. Can't Allen. be that. And he's oh, still oh, he's blue. He's Blue Origin. He's with Blue Origin. Is he? No. The only Marty Allen I could find on Google is the fuzzy-haired member of the popular 1960 Steve comedy uh, Yeah, with Steve Rossi. <laughs> Allen and Rossi. He died in uh, Vegas like at uh, the age of 95 brand. in 2018. So I don't know who Marty Allen is. It'd be funny if you had two comedians up there. <laughs> but that's it's not that funny. one. It's not enough room. Husband and wife duo Sharon and Mark Hagel. Jim Kitchen and George Neal. I think these are the people paying. I think these are the paying guys. So uh, Jeff do Bezos. Make it, do you will have not to make it public? Him. Like if I decided to spend all my money and oh. several inheritances oh. going up into space, oh. would they have to say my name? Probably. Not. I mean, if you're Pete Davidson, yes, because that's the whole reason he's getting I, to go. The last time I checked, I am definitely not Pete Davidson. Thank goodness. So here's Marty Allen. Yeah. His hair is completely normal. <laughs> he, he must, for, for boomers must go after him all day. He's boomerang. He totally missed out. Marty Allen is a turnaround CEO and away, angel like, investor. A... He was the CEO of Party sign. America. There you go. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh. What do the others do? <laughs> um, Pete Davidson joined the cast of Saturday Night Live in 2014. Well, I knew that. Sharon Hagel founded Space Kids Global. Her uh, husband, Mark Hagel, president and CEO of Tricor International, real estate development company. Jim Kitchen, mm -hmm. teacher, entrepreneur, and world explorer who has visited all 193 UN-recognized countries. And he's a space dreamer. University of California, uh, you're sorry, University of North Carolina's Kenan Flagler Business School. And Dr. George Neal is president of Commercial Space Technologies former associate administrator for the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Space guy. So, uh, you there you go. You should send a Space Force person up there every now and then. Just to get mean Steve Carell? Back. That'd be Carell. great if Steve Carell... No, no <laughs> yeah. the yeah. actual <laughs> guardians. <laughs> they got their own rockets. <laughs> they, they don't well, go up into yet, space. How cool would that be? Send their founder up, Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. They That'd were creating good. space. Okay, so I'm terrific. coming around on Space Force, y'all. Are you? you? Are? I am. So actually, the uh, Russian-Ukraine conflict shows, and also because I've been reading, what's the title of this down, absolute downer of a paper? It is the annual threat assessment of the U.S. Intelligence Committee Yikes. Um, that was released earlier this you month. You have all the fun um, stuff, Stacey. Man. I know. But Between that what and is, so, Sudoku over here. The challenge is our, sa is our satellite infrastructure is so relevant, Sudoku, right? Sudoku, sir, to you. Go ahead, Stacey. <laughs> sorry, Miss Stacey. I'm sorry. This happens all the time to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I am sincerely trying to explain the dangers in space. <laughs> Just try talking about Gutenberg, Stacey, and see how far you get. I can speak from experience. Oh. All right, we've already History. seen Russian interference with satellite communications. And satellite communications are not just key for mapping, but they're actually becoming control items in lots of, ready, the IoT. Mm -hmm. So having some in China and Russia both have well-defined satellite space programs and they're creating missiles and infrastructure that legitimately are aimed at, tar like are targeted towards space. So if we have an international conflict, it is fair to say that our infrastructure in space will be attacked and we should think of ways to fix that. So that's why Space Force becomes actually relevant. Now, okay. I don't know if their current Space Force is being trained with the skill sets we would need to counteract this, but that's why I'm coming around on Space Force. That is all. Thank you, Hermione. <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically. Hermione, Hermione Higginbotham. Higginbotham. Wow. is a good name. That beats, yeah. It's a I good think that's name. Better. Here's another one for Hermione. 
Sci Five, S I F I V E, raises $175 million. They want to do Risk Five chips. This is really exciting. Y'all don't really, you can't have two Stacy excitements back to back. Yes, People we just can. Delete the podcast. <laughs> like, so, oh God. explain to us what Risk Five is one more time. Risk Five is an open source. ISA instruction set for chips. So it competes with like Intel's x86 instruction set or the ARM instruction set. This is how chips, it's the operating system for chips, basically, is and, how you should And Sci5 makes chips. They're a foundry that makes chips based on the- They're not a foundry. Oh, they're not. Sci5 is a company that is basically like the ARM of Risk Five. Oh, so they take the, the Risk Five designs and then they make more designs. Yes, and they make more designs and they've tested them. You don't need to use Sci Five because Risk Five is open source, but they just make it easier, much like ARM does. So, so that's they how they build you bigger. So they license their SOCs and things like that, more capabilities yes. and stuff like that. Okay. And then somebody so else is the foundry, is, I guess. Who makes these? Do we know? You can send it. You can send it to TSMC. You can send it to any right. foundry. Will any make foundry. your risk five okay. series. Okay. Um, so this is really exciting because risk five. I mean, I feel like it's been a sleeper hit since like 2014, but that's just me. Um, but people are really realizing it now, and it's getting a huge boost from the ARM NVIDIA deal. When that was announced, everybody was like, oh, crap, if NVIDIA buys ARM, we're going to need an alternative architecture. Right, right. Let's check out RIS-5. And then a lot of people started designing and playing with it, and they were like, this ain't half bad. Let's keep using it. So this is a really good like, this is a huge series. It's like a Series E round for them. It's a lot of freaking money. But they're trying to go be the next arm. So, and Intel is back them. AMD is backing them. Like, this is really wow. a big deal in the chip. Oh, wow. That's See? Oh, not. Intel's going to be a RISC-V factory, uh, foundry. Yes, that's right. In fact, they're, they're one of the question? creators of RISC-V. Yeah. With there all those no competitors questions. backing the same thing? Even though it's open, is that is there any kind of antitrust consideration at all? Is, um, is it still if a closed club? Sci five, the way it could be construed as antitrust down the road is if only the Sci five versions get software support. But right now, the software mm -hmm. that runs on top of it, Intel and ARM don't really have a big foothold in that. Like if they owned Linux, then we might be worried. But because someone can always come out and make their own risk five chips and people already are, it's not as big of a risk. Does that make sense? Yep. If you saw Sci Five go in and buy Red Hat, that might be well red nobody uses Red Hat. Uh pick something that people use. Oh people use Red Hat. People use Red Hat. Lots of people use Red Hat. Okay. <laughs> or, a sponsor once in a while, right? Yeah. Oh. Right. That's not why I've said that. No, <laughs> no, it's just no. Man. I just I'm like <laughs> I'm like they have the good sense oh. to be a sponsor, and so you know we want to give them credit for that. Enterprise. Yeah. Okay. So that that's the Stacy nerd talk. Good. Thank you. Anyway, and that's why I bookmarked it. I thought that would be a a good story for you. And now a story for Jeff Jarvis. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. I'm really mad at the New York Times for saying Ben and Justin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> named Gina Chua as executive editor. So first of all, congratulations, Gina Chua, executive editor at Reuters. She's, I think, 61, uh, 60. She's previously editor-in-chief of the South China Morning Post. This is that weird startup. Nobody knows what Ben and Justin are doing. <laughs> they're but not they're brothers. not related. They have the same name. The New York Times, which used to call people things like Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith, <laughs> for some reason have decided to make them a couple... Well, ben and right. Justin Smith. That is funny. That is funny. Is it just? Am I the only one who noticed that? I thought that is well, Ben. Ben, just for the background, Ben was the editor of BuzzFeed News and then became media columnist in the New York Times. Justin Smith was the um, fa founder of the Week magazine in the U.S. Uh, head of the Atlantic, uh, founder there with with the people who started the cor courts, and then head of uh, Bloomberg Media. And the two Smiths went off to start a new media venture to serve everybody who speaks English in the world, but they said nothing more about it. We all don't know what it really is going to be. So I'll be talking, I'm having Justin come talk to our oh, good. management student. Well, now they ha now that you have a little bit to, to chew on because uh, uh, Gina Chua is a very big name. Well, Gina is is brilliant. I know Gina. And, and, and I think this is important too. Gina is trans. And to have a trans person that high up in news and media mm. is part of the diversity we have to seek out 
and and I'm glad for that. I think it's going to make a difference. Yeah. Cool. So maybe they used Ben and Justin Smith as a headline, kind of like headlinees, because uh, you have limited space in a headline. I'm just thinking of ideas. <laughs> you could have said Smith and Smith. Everybody's been making. Smith it's and just Smith. a very strange. Thing. I get no, I get it. Pretty it's, soon they're going to be calling him, you know. Beniston. So are they married? Well, and yeah, and they're, no, they're not. Yeah, no, they even not threw even it over related. another line, so it doesn't even fit. With it doesn't make sense, Never mind. sense. Yeah, it's a very strange. Somebody. The Smiths. So, somebody, the Smiths, yes. <laughs> the Smiths. <laughs> but, or, or Smith Squared. Smith Squared. Is the other reference. Yeah. Uh, it happened to me. I accidentally attended a crypto bro dinner. <laughs> it's very garbage. Alex Kruger. I love the Guardian. At a Miami event, I found myself surrounded by a cult obsessed with minting bananas and trading ETH. Does it all mean anything? I just like the title. I don't know if there's uh, any. I came to the dinner, was wearing shorts, was kicked out, came back, <laughs> and then had that moment of realization when you realized, oh, no, I'm surrounded by them. Oh, oh no. They're everywhere. So give, given uh, uh, Stacy's reaction last week to my suggestion that we should talk about crypto more. Um, nice work. This is her nightmare. Oh. Uh, this is a weird one. Bored apes and crypto punks are merging. Huh? Yuga Labs, the NFT company behind the Bored Apes Yacht Club, acquired the rights to crypto punks and MeBits collections from Larva Labs. These are the world's most valuable NFT collections. Yuga now controls NFTs with around five and a half billion in market cap. Yikes! B billions. B -b 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 billions. That's unbelievable. Uh, Yuga Lab says it plans to open up the IP rights of individual crypto punks to their owners. That's, I guess, how Bored Apes works. I don't even understand what that means. Uh, apparently, there was a conflict between the crypto punk community and Larva Labs, which hadn't been willing to take such a step. So, NFT marriage made in heaven. Bored Apes and crypto punks. Just be the next to the last person holding the bag. <laughs> yeah, that's, I that's am the penultimate bag holder. Yeah, just be next to the last. Yeah, geez, don't want to be the last one. That's for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you want the remote controlled cookie store? As long as we're on. Nah, Axios? I put this in here. This is stupid. I put it in here because it's so stupid. It's got oh, a it's smile. So cute. Is that it's a cute. Waymo? Looks like one of those. It's Waymo adorable. Cars. It's, it's like the giant robot, the robot who probes, uh, who roams around the Philadelphia uh, stores, plus a, a smaller wagon robot. It's got two faces. It's adorable. All right. Uh, it's answer. from a company Look, called. I put it uh, there for you, Stacy. It's very cute. <laughs> Make you happy. It's very cute. It's uh, it's from a company called Tortoise. They're steered by operators, though they don't. They're not autonomous. <gasps> Big trend in robots, by the way. When you see a robot, you might be having a person operating behind it. This is a big what thing a in job. autonomy. So when people say this... Do you have to walk behind it or do you have to sit in an office with a steering wheel? Yeah, that was my question. A lot of them are office controlled. Yeah. And they have... If I mean, like do drones. It. So it's like watching a drone. Thousands of miles away, you could deliver cookies yeah. okay. in an office. So I want to know who was driving this uh, drone in Shanghai. That drove straight into wet cement and got stuck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor drone. <laughs> Wait, tell me about the cookie robot. Software. Does it deliver cookies? Yes. Retailers can use the Tortoise Mobile Smart Store uh, to deliver whatever you want. Chocolates, AirPods, knee socks. <laughs> I don't know why oh, those <laughs> is this like... This is actually a really interesting way because for some, like in some areas, not all areas, if I like said like, oh, I need this and enough of my neighbors got together and needed it, maybe it could deliver it to our area in a cost effective yes. way. By okay. Consolidating Here's an interesting thing. Like in perfect foods. They're being used right now by 18 retailers in the U.S. and Europe, but they're all being driven by humans in the remote operations center in Mexico City. Where yes, oh, wow. Sense. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why not? Right. People who encounter the robots can tap their credit card. This is from the story in Axios. Open the lid and take a box of cookies or AirPods or sweat socks. Remote operators watch and listen as the transaction takes place. The merchants don't pay for the robots. They just give them 10% of the gross sales. Leo, I have the socks you're going to want to deliver like a sweet in gig. line 151. 
These are the socks. Wait, how do they? How do they prove that they've paid? Like, there's a tap a credit like card. card. It won't even pay. open right. until you tap the card. Yeah, it won't well, open until you done it. Is everything in its own bin? Yeah, because, it must have some well, sort of sensor. Your own stuff. You don't yeah. take. If I pay for a cookie and I grab AirPods, this is the Amazon thing. store all over again. What's interesting yeah. is <laughs> good point. The cold good founder point, yeah. Dmitry Shevchenko, who was the uh, uh, Uber's micro mobility guy. Uh, said people spend more on these things. People are buying a $35 pastry box when previously the most they've ever spent at a vending machine is maybe $4. They're spending more than they would at a vending machine. Unbelievable. The 18 merchants on board so far, Go Grocer, convenience stores in Chicago, Lady Chocolat, a confectionery in Los Angeles, and Edith's, which sells what it calls Jewish comfort food in Brooklyn, New York. If somebody came up to me with a bagel and schmear... You're in. I'm, I'm You're in. You're in. Bake some. Well, I do I'm it for gonna, chicken fried that. steak and mashed potatoes. Oh, talk to me. <laughs> I'm going to beat that. I'm going to put in the chat here the oyster vending machine. Now, see, that's a bad idea because oysters. That's dodgy. <laughs> Go take a look. The oyster vending machine. Right there it is. Uh, what do you mean right there? Right where? In the right chat. In the cha oh, in our chat room. Look yeah. at that. Look at you getting all fancy. Wow. Yeah. It's a French vending machine that spits out fresh oysters. Spits Don't say spits. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. It's Shucks the, out. Uh, <laughs> it's on so, the, Ed, uh, Calvin Trillin, who's a writer I, I admire greatly, worked for the New York Times for years, mm -hmm. New York Magazine, New Yorker, New Yorker for years. The New Yorker. Food. He, he covered great food stuff. Alice Let's Eat is one of my favorite books ever. And he covered once an oyster festival in somewhere in New England. Mm -hmm. And he said the firemen in the oyster festival was always held at the firehouse, used to like to, to get people crazy because they would tell people that the real way you eat oysters is to snort them up your nose, which to a no. non-oyster eater makes as much sense as eating no. in the first place. Oh, gosh. Oh, my. Ew. No. So um, this, actually, this is actually quite a good story you uh, you came up with here, the oyster vending machine. Uh all of the oysters are sold unshucked. Some shucking is involved. Shellfish yeah. fans can also purchase of oysters in advance via text. Uh, and and it just sits there. The picture is not good. It just sits there on the street. Well, the you drive up to it. Yeah, the it's problem not like in was, a mall or something. No, the it problem was that the this, this store that sold these people would always come when they were closed. Because people sometimes need oysters in the middle of the night, I guess. So they decided. <laughs> so they, they actually got it's, this themselves. It's the Viagra of food, after all. The owner, Tony Berthelot, explains People always arrive when the shop door is closed, which is frustrating for customers and for us. So we looked at the systems, we looked at what was being done in agriculture, because there are many distributors in the countryside. We contacted the manufacturer who responded to fit the machine for oysters, since it is a particular product that is not very restrictive, but requires some adjustments. <laughs> $8 anyway. a dozen oysters. Not bad. That's good. We need that out here. We got a great oyster. Yeah. We got Hog Island Why over not? here. Is it open only in months with ours? Yeah, that's the problem. So now you can get in December. No, that's not a month with an R. Uh, 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 socks, Leo. 151 socks. I found the socks that should go in the thing. The I'm socks? You one of my numbers. Point the sized. Socks that should go in the thing. Point sized socks. Point size? You mean like the pencil? Pushers no. lettering font department. Size. Oh, I get it. 72 points, 60 point, 40 points, like font cute? points. That's cool. Oh, look, and they also have toolbars. Yeah, they have a toolbar and they have CMYK too. That's cool. CMYK socks. And they if you want to buy a pencil that. that says keep on pushing, all types are welcome. Give it out in the maternity ward. What store is this? This is the, uh, the PSTypeLab.com. They cool. actually sell, I all think, right. fonts, but. Aren't those cool, the CMYK socks? Oh, look at those yeah. CMYK yeah. socks. Those are fun. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Do they have a size 14? <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Wait a minute. So many cool socks, socks don't come in sizes. They all one size yes, fits they do. everybody. It's yeah. Small, oh, medium, and large. That, the Bomba. No, not Bomba. What's the other one that does the sizes? There's another one that's like. A oh, yeah, that's all they response. do is like, oh, see, socks have sizes. Light, regular, medium, and bold. I like that. That's a cool hat. Right, I like it. They didn't put heavy on there. Heavy. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's uh, press the button uh, that plays the music that begins. 
The Google Change Log. Leo's favorite part of the show. <laughs> that was perfect timing, y'all. Good Someone job. Jeff was Start asking if I uh, could talk up an intro, and I just wanted to show that I can. Google details <laughs> its latest big Android feature drop. This will be for next month, I guess. Improvements to uh, Google's keyboard, Gboard, uh, Google Photos, and more. Google Photos portrait blur feature. We'll soon be able to blur backgrounds in a wider range of photos, including pictures of pets, food, and plants. Okay. Uh, okay. Gboard's... <laughs> Google Photos constantly insults me. I just want everyone to know. Why? What's you when you take a photo with your Google phone, yeah. it always is like, pick a better shot. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Can you brush your hair? <laughs> What's going on? Did you get a good night's sleep? I it's figure like you mother. would appreciate that, Aunt. Oh, well, like I mean, every time you are subscribed like to twit.tv slash hop, also known as hands on photography, right? <laughs> Aunt, it is the only how to show I think I've ever Do watched. Do you ever and say up tips take from. a better photo, Aunt? To oh, people? my goodness. Yeah, does your phone. camera. Wait, does your camera on your phone do that to you? I need to know. Can, that would be no, ma'am. Yeah, every shot he takes Dang. is perfect. <laughs> so, every time it's like, pick a better shot. Pick a better shot. We were trying to get some numbers off of a box way up in the ceiling up there. Mm -hmm. And Burke was standing up on this shelf behind us here, and he was going like this camera, and they got a picture, and they couldn't read it. And they said, here. Try this Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra oh. with its 100x zoom. Look with, at that. You found a use for the 1X 100X. Yes. And it yes. looks good. You can read oh, the numbers. Wow. That looks good. Isn't that amazing? And that was uh, that was uh, optical zoom. Uh, not optical zoom. That was digital it was zoom. Digital. But it was able oh. to really Yeah, normally it looks like crap. That's yeah. good. Yeah, so That's magic. So there you go. And it said, take a better shot afterwards. I don't know. Outstanding. I understand it. it doesn't say take. It's just like pick a better pick shot. Pick a better we, one. And then it goes through like all you the possible. You could get a better shot. Look at that. Than that kitty cat. That's a great that is a, photo. That is oh, Paris. Oh, she's, so floppy. she's a very cute cat. So, oh, that, again, nice. it's really handy with the pets to have a big zoom. Yeah. Because then, otherwise, if I got that close to her, she would... She's been, yeah. She, she'd be gone. No, you'd have more stitches on your face. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Google Keyboard's grammar correction feature, which has been exclusive to Pixel phones, will start to come to other phones as well. Great. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, Google... Has also updated the Gboard emoji mashups, 2,000 additional emoji mashups. So let's just take two emojis and mush them together. The live transcribed, which I love, accessibility app, which will transcribe anything, uh, it will now work offline. So if you're in a subway or an airplane, you still can get the live transcribed. Kudos. That, Kudos. Yeah, really good. A bunch of other stuff uh, coming. No release date yet. But presumably sometime in the next couple of weeks, since it is March. Uh, Steam is coming to Chromebooks. Steam, which is the number one gaming marketplace on Windows, now because of the Steam Deck Linux, uh, you can even get it on the Mac, and it, but now it's on select Chromebooks. You can't do it with every Chromebook. You'll have to have enough hardware. This yeah. is also part of the yesterday's Game Developer Summit keynote. Um so far, the Asus Chromebook CX-9, very good, or Flip CX-5. Those, I think, are Kevin Toffel's uh, favorite Chromebooks. HP's Pro 6, C640 G2 and an unnamed Lenovo model. You probably need at least an i5 and it says 7 gigabytes of RAM. I don't know. 7? Seven? Seven. <laughs> Somewhere so between <laughs> 6 and 8, I don't know. Um, so that's interesting. That's, that's good. That's good. Hey, pay for my parking. Wouldn't you like to be able to do that? Uh, Google announced Thursday a slew of new features that rolled out through its latest software update. I haven't tried this yet, including the ability to pay for parking using your voice through a partnership with Park Mobile. You know, we've talked about this before. It's really annoying. Every jurisdiction has a different parking app. So every time you mm -hmm. want to park somewhere, you got you to download an app. So annoying. It's so annoying. Uh, I'd love to see this uh, if I could just say, hey, pay my parking. That'd be great. So this uh, partnership with 
Park Mobile is only for people using Park Mobile, but the idea is Google would be adding partners uh, over time. Once you park in a spot, you say, hey, you know who, pay for parking. The assistant will prompt you to pay from your phone. Google Pay handles the transaction. No more coins, no more confusion, says Google. Thank you, Google. Park Mobile is the, according to Park Mobile, leading app coordinating parking zones across more than 400 cities. Google's domain name registrar. Did you know that Google had a domain name registrar? It's actually a very oh, good yes, one. It's, very good. it's uh, perhaps the uh, lowest cost. It has been in beta for the last seven years. Okay. <laughs> it is now out of beta. That's why I didn't I, know I about envision it. 10 nervous employees. Are, are they ever going to let us out of beta? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> there was the best tweet about it. They were like, and now... Prices will rise, and in another year, it will be deprecated out. Right. Mm. <laughs> mm. That is true. It's the Google, it's the Google so roadmap. Probably. The Google I, way. I have not experienced this, but maybe you have, Aunt, some Google Pixel phones cannot make contactless payments after the March security patch. No, it was only for the 12L folks. Oh, 12L March feature drop. So we didn't get 12L on our Pixel 6, <laughs> no, so maybe we're glad. Yep, we're good. Um, oh, Ant, let me ask you a question since you're a, a, a Pixel 6 complainer. Yes, sir. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, no, stop saying that. I'm not a Pixel 6 <laughs> complainer. It's an Android an OS. Android 12. <laughs> well, so I, I think I, I, I got the latest version because it happens, right? Right. And I don't know whether this is me or whether it's the towers around me, but suddenly my connectivity at home for on AT&T has gone to G. Uh oh Nothing. Is, well, that, is, that a, is that a known problem around? That was the problem with the standard? previous version of the OS. They supposedly patched it to fix connectivity well, they issues. Patched it and screwed up mine, I think. Ruh row. Yep. I wonder if you can I, do I, a I, I wasn't on Wi-Fi calling. I had to switch to Wi-Fi calling because I can't call my bloody phone at home. Oh, wow. And, and, and by the way, AT&T's town. Oh, wow. I wonder if you can do a rollback. Hmm. That's the thoughts. I don't even care. The, uh, the contactless future. payment issue was fixed with a server side fix. Google announced Ooh. that on Pi Day, which was day before yesterday. Android's iOS friendly emoji reactions officially launch in major Google messages updates. I still see people saying, When am I going to get them? Mm -hmm. When am I going to get them? Uh, but now, when you use uh, Apple's messages to react to a message, you will have uh, a similar reaction. Instead of a text-based reaction on your uh, on your Google messages, so and so laughed at this. Yeah, it was so bad. So and so, so loved bad. this message. I, I get yeah. loved a lot. Loved, loved. Well, you know, you know what it is anyway. And uh, wow, I don't know if this is anything to celebrate, but Google has started integrating air raid alerts into Android phones in Ukraine. Kudos. Well, a service. Yeah. Kudos. That seems uh, helpful. Oh, yeah. You get a red warning triangle icon sent by Google Play Services. Um, I, don't, I don't think you get the actual, you know, sound. But you will be alerted uh, by your phone without installing an additional application. And, and, and a lot of the, the cellular service has been staying up, it would appear. Especially since some of people were sharing. And by the way, did you see that... Ukraine switched to the European power grid in three weeks. Wow. Is that why they weren't brought down? Wow. Isn't that interesting? Amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Because the Russians had some years ago uh, used, uh, you know, hacking tools to bring down the grid in Ukraine. As it was clear, it was kind of a test of their capabilities. And I, I gathered that it didn't work this time. Right. So they had to blow, yeah, I've actually blow up been the nuclear very, plants. Like, yeah, it's amazing. No one probably wants to say anything because you never know. Right. But uh, so this is what the alert looks like um, on your phone, and uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We get uh, you know extreme weather alerts and stuff like that. It seems sensible that you would get air raid alerts yeah. uh, as well. And that is the Google Change Log. That was nine minutes on the Change Log. I'm impressed. Is that a long time or a short time? That's, I don't even know. I I think that's a long time oh, yeah. because it's been a bit of hit or miss and. A lot of times, I you think you had a thirty-second so record once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <It was> like, <laughs> like change log diarrhea. Was you literally scrolled through and like this change log sucks. <laughs> well, if that's how you feel, maybe it's time to get to our picks of the week. 
with our fabulous team on This Week in Google. First, as always, Stacey Higginbotham with her Thing of the Week. I can't remember if I've done this one. So did I already do the Firewall of Purple? No. Do not no. recall. No. The no. Firewall of Purple? No, the Firewalla. So I've talked about Firewalla. This is a device you use on your router. Oh, I think um, you might have mentioned Firewalla before. Do you I have one tried now? I the gold and the blue. I do. So y'all probably oh, saw Oh, you have done desk. Firewalla. I recognize the logo now. Firewalla. Yeah. But tell us so about it because you didn't have one at the time. So I want to hear about it. I didn't. And I... This the I idea is this is a, like a Raspberry Pi kind of a security appliance that you, you put in your network, right? Did you get the gold yes. or which one did you get? The purple? I got the purple okay. and I got that because I'm on a gigabit network, but I don't need quite the tools of the fancy purple. Right. I'm sorry, of the gold. fancy gold. Right. Um, so what this is, I'm, I'm pulling, I pulled it here. This is the firewall device. And what I got it for is actually because I've got probably about 80 or 60 to 80 IOT devices on my network. And this actually shows me <laughs> all the traffic Three. on my network. That's really useful. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It shows me the traffic on my network. It shows me how many gigabytes or megabytes or kilobits, whatever they're sending. Um, it breaks down by MAC address, what things are sending data, where they're sending it to. So you can see things are going to like the People's Republic of China, mm. if you would like, or to mm. Colorado. I don't. I still can't figure out who's sending traffic to Colorado, but whatever. Can you I block like by a country? I on my Ubiquity, I block China, for instance. Can you just say I don't want? If I, I did don't that, some of my devices won't work. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, <laughs> oh there's that. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think it's a really interesting tool. It's this. It's good for this audience because y'all are super nerdy. It, it, it's not that nerdy. It's not hard to use at all. You download an app and you plug it in. That's it. Um, it will also quarantine things on your network if you want. You can also set up VPN features if you want to do all that through this. Um, but it's really just deep packet inspection on your own network. And I found it to be pretty cool for tracking like how my devices behave. And some of them, like, why does my outlet need to send that much data? I really right. don't know. So, so it, it also gives me questions as, it, to ask manufacturers. It also works as a firewall though, right? It's a security device as well. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm less worried about that, but... Right. I know I should be. Well, you've got parental <laughs> controls on it, which is nice. And I presume it's got to add it, it blocking. It mimics some of the features that like your Eero Plus or some of or the Pi Plus hole. services you yeah. might. Yeah. Oh, it, it's has way its own, easier than Pi hole. It has its own uh, VPN server. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Oh, I, that's I really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Cool. And you're so happy with it? Didn't stuff. slow your network down? You feel like it was fast? It did not. And that's what I was like, because some of these can slow your network down. Yeah. I have not felt like this. So, and for everyone who's telling me I should segment my network, I counter with, if I segment my network properly, then my your IoT, IoT stuff devices works. won't talk <laughs> yeah. to my phone and some of my it's routines so annoying. Go problem. Yeah. I've done that. I so, have an IoT, uh, uh, what do they call it? A VLAN. And I have a, mm -hmm. a, a regular VLAN for secu a secure VLAN. But you have to then do all sorts of rules so that things can talk to one another. By the time you're done, exactly. it's like a pain. So how many mm -hmm. devices? I'm just curious. I'm looking at mine. <laughs> I have 83 devices. Online. Unbelievable. <laughs> I don't grief. think I have. I, it used to show me, but it no longer shows me. Which on map? This Europe map? 40% of those are in the closet somewhere. You, I have 65. You have a better map than I do. Uh, like, And also, let me see. I, I think I could block geographically. Can I? Mm. Oh, you're doing Ubiquity. Did you ever see, did I send you that video about how to like super segment your Ubiquity network from YouTube? Uh, yes, you so did. Amazing. That's what I was using. Yes. And that's yeah. the thing is you did. Oh yeah. Look at this. So I'm also blocking Ukraine. I didn't realize that. Ooh. Um, so I'm blocking China, Russia, and Ukraine. S maybe, I wonder if that's, I wonder if it is impacting some of my IoT devices. I never even thought about that. Everything seems to work. China but if, maybe. Yeah, if I should check and see if I have any devices that aren't aren't working. Yeah, <laughs> all eighty three of them, huh? Yeah. Jeez. Well, you know, you get voice assistance, and I actually was going to ask you, Stacey, if I should get a, a. I was talking to Lisa about a Bluetooth door lock, like the like oh. with HomeKit, like the new Apple HomeKit thing. Oh, the HomeKey one. Uh, yeah, HomeKey. That's it. Akara makes one, but there's another one. 
Schlage, I think. No, there's one. another one. That, Schlage, the Schlage encode now has home key. That's yeah. a good lock. Is it? It's very efficient. It's a Wi-Fi lock, which is great. Um, I don't know if the HomeKit one is a Wi-Fi lock. Um, but the, actually, but they also uh, use NF. I think they use NFC, right? They use NFC. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to buy a new smart lock, and I'm torn between the level, which I think is aesthetically pleasing, but doesn't have a keypad attached, and just going with the encode. Some of these apparently they're very flexible. They 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 will use varieties of ways to, including mm -hmm. Face ID to identify and thumbprint. <laughs> wow. So the, the Schlage, the Encode Plus, you think is all right? That one's Wi-Fi. Uh, is that their HomeKit one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. a good... I have that lock on my on my front door, y'all. Come on over. Come on <laughs> over. I'll bring my, I'll bring my uh, iPhone and... <laughs> Got to get to the Well, I love the idea way. of being able to say uh, to somebody, here, you know, I'll let you in. Here's a temporary pass or something like that. That's well, you don't actually need... You don't need a smart lock, a connected lock to do that. I mean, my friend has a programmable Schlage lock that is not... Oh, yeah, you can just give them a code. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, she just creates a code and gives yeah. me the code that's set for X number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. The firewall of purple. Gigabit cybersecurity firewall and router with Wi-Fi protecting your family and business. Well, you mentioned it was Raspberry Pi size, but it ain't Raspberry Pi priced. No. <laughs> Several hundred It's bucks. 189 is it? That's still it says 319. I thought it was I'm sorry, it's 319. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm oh, sorry. okay. The, uh, there's a cheaper one for if you're if I you don't have a gigabit network place, you can go down. Yeah, they have a variety no, no, no. of if solutions. You, yeah. Yeah. So if you have like a 500 megabit per second mm -hmm. network, I can't remember if it's gold. It's there's the gold. blue it's plus, yellow? which is 189. The gold is the most expensive, 468. And there's the it's firewall the, of red, which is only 139 bucks, but doesn't have anything inside. I think you want the blue. Dinsy. Teensy weensy. Teensy. There's all the different uh, firewallers. Uh, Aunt Pruitt. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Jeff first. You're a number of the week. You could do it in any order you want because this is not a democracy. You are the boss. You can choose what so you true. do. So true. You are empowered. Who do you want to go next? <laughs> you go next. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so 10 minutes to five, I looked at five by time. I looked and I said, oh, crap, I don't have a number. So wow. I went a little mad trying to search for things, some of which are crap. Look at all of them. <clears throat> but I'm gonna, you got 100 numbers. Wow. And I'm going to mention two things real quickly to plug them. One is I just finished reading, uh, listening to Ellie Mistal's Allow Me to Retort. Uh, if you watch MSNBC, you see Ellie Mistal often. Um, oh, he's great. Legal commentator. Oh, I love him. I know who you're talking about. Yes, now that I see this picture. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yep. And this is, uh, so I, I, this is, a, I've never seen a case before where I more highly recommend the audio versus the print because you have to hear him do it with his full yeah. uh, anger. It is audacious. It is brilliant. And what he argues in it is that the U.S. Constitution is a racist document. And, um, oh, and then we know goes this. on to brilliantly <laughs> argue it. Really? And, uh, yeah. Uh, but he goes through the nuts and bolts of it and how that is. And, and he says the... The, the, it's you know the, the Constitution's junk, um, which will get him in trouble in all kinds of places. He was on the View when they were just clutching their pearls, <laughs> um, but uh, it's brilliantly argued. Uh, I want to assign it to my students, so that's a recommendation for the for the week. But I also want to recommend something else. Um, so the guy who created uh, a, a, a movie about the linotype has been uploading all of his 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 artifacts and of course to me this is just heaven this is linotype gutenberg geek heaven he started printingfilms.com which has old wonderful uh corporate videos for things like the linotype if you if you go down and just just pick any minutes in the blue streak linotypes video leo uh or oh well, we saw of, we saw one of these farewell at you and Lou. That one, that one we showed. We showed that, that. that, yes, that was the yes, New York yeah. Times. Yeah. But now these are the corporate videos. So the Linotron 1010, the Linotron 505. <laughs> uh, pick pick any of them and play two minutes, and it's just it's just delightful. In peak time. <laughs> this is from 1969. Uh, let me see if I am, am I getting audio. Well, you didn't test it beforehand. Ooh. Here we go. There you go. It's a night on Linotype Mountain. 
Oh, well, now that will get us pulled down. <laughs> the ride of the that line of Tron, yeah. 505. I was like, no, that is definitely public, isn't it? Well, it depends on the Bathroom, performance. When did he... Oh, it depends yeah, on who the right. depends on the performance. It's not the, uh, not the author. In the moving world of constant change, we can't always rely on yesterday's tools for today's work. At Mergenthaler, we make a tool for the graphic arts industry. A sophisticated tool using modern electronics to perform one of the most <laughs> vital functions in printing and publishing. High-speed phototype setting. It's a cathode ray tube phototype setting system called Linotron 505. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We're going to let uh, Dick D. Bartolo play the rest of that on the Gizmos. Yeah. That is it's awesome. Great stuff. Is the, the Blue that Streak is... Linotype, which came before... Was was the tape fed line of tape? The still went kachukada, kachukada, kachukada. How about the tactics um, of tape setting? I didn't see that one. Go ahead. Yeah, let's, are let's, produced let's in let's... proper sequence. The result is galleys of classified and semi-classified ads with all lines in order, ready for proofing. <laughs> Time-consuming slug collating and hand spacing are held to a minimum. <laughs> slug collating. <laughs> You know how time-consuming slug collating slug can be. Collating. No one wants to slug collate. <laughs> okay. That is uh, printingfilms.com. Man. It's cool. Hold on, hold on. There's, there's some fun ones. I know. He's going to show us some slugs that slug he is personally collating. collating. And he's getting Not his slugs slug. down. I, we've seen your slugs before, dude. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> it's got You know, when you, toy, when you buy slugs, you got to show them off as often as you can. <laughs> This is a compositor's um, typesetting thing, Virginia. Yeah. I'm sorry, what, what is you a move that over, or do I? This is where you put the letters one at a time. Little tiny it's letters. It's the person Lots who lays little, out the newspaper. Into that. Thank well, you. Well, before the letter type. Hand, by hand. Letters. By hand. Wow. By hand. And, of course, the, after you finish the newspaper, then you have to do your slug collation. Put it all oh, back. <laughs> no one wants to do time-consuming <laughs> slug collation. Aunt Pruitt. What do you got for us? Wow. Got to be better than mine, right? Man, no, I like yours. That, that was pretty cool. No, Mr. I love Jarvis. it. Yeah. And I noticed that it wasn't on YouTube. It was on Vimeo, it looked like. Uh -oh. It's actually his, it says printing films. Oh, you're right. That does look like the Vimeo interface, doesn't oh, it? No. Like, oh, no. Uh-oh. So how much longer will that be there? Uh-oh. Go download them all quick. Oh, boy. Put them up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because everybody needs the tactics of tape setting. Oh wow. my, but that's fascinating. Yep. Um, my pick, uh, first, it's a great mirror image that the fine folks at ESPN and Sports Center, because I know all of you folks watch that stuff. Religiously. <laughs> but I thought it's pretty cool. And, and, and also heartwarming is featuring uh, Tiger Woods. And it's just a great mirror image right there on line 154. Oh. So. Uh -huh. And the T tiger looks in the mirror. And this is him. Is this his kid? And this is his son, Charlie. Oh, and they do the same. Of course they do. Is Tiger going to burst into tears? I bet he but is. But watch it, though. It's it's They they have all the same mannerisms. It's really true. That it's happens. crazy. Yeah. Look at the walk, the yeah. gate. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. And he, 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 he digs cute. that, man. And yeah, that's really sweet. I like how you talked about... Um, oh, I have the audio muted. I should turn it on. Just the, the nose, nose thing that we have. We both have allergies, so, uh, so we both struggle on the golf course. We get, like, wind blowing or we're all sniffing. And, and they a, rub their nose the exact same way. <laughs> it's so cute. There they are. Look at that. That's crazy. That's, crazy. That's neat. But That's I thought on that the, was just hard the, the, to see that. The, the Sports Center Instagram, if you want to uh, see it yourself. That's For really all of cool. you sports ball folks, it's part of twig yeah, that's really family sweet. yeah next up is uh the i don't know how to pronounce it Kloss or close close c-l-o-s yeah. app um this app has been around for a little while and in one of the hands of photography listeners mr jim mentioned it to me a while back but i never really said anything about it because it was only ios and now they have it um for android as well in limited use but the point of this app is to create a virtual photo shoot and I'm looking to dial into this because I've had some people back east that want some work from me. But oh, they can watch you while you're working. <gasps> and 
I can guide them through. Oh. Well, yeah, if you want to do this too. I was going to say, I'm actually going to get a new headshot. So if you want to, like, I, I was going to hire someone here, but we could practice if you See? want. Well, yeah, this is, I thought this would be pretty cool to try it out. Because um, I did have the Anver Android version a little while ago and it just kept crashing and kept crashing. And I reached out to the devs and they said, yeah, we got an update coming out that's going to fix all that. We know. And the update came out yesterday and it is much better on uh, Android. And it's a free app. And the images, when I played around with it just in the house, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to try it out with some real people and highly recommend. And lastly, uh, order some prints, antpruitt.com slash prints. And go check out the images and order some prints. Beautiful so I can stuff. Help continue to pay for college. <laughs> oh, college. How many of those college tuition checks are you going to be writing soon? Uh, oh, jeez, man. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That's uh, Fine Art America, but you can just go uh, right to your website, right? Yep. Antpruitt.com Ant slash prints will take you nice. right to the shop. And if, are they really doing a nice job printing those out? They I, do a I'm great sure job, and it saves me a lot of money sure. doing it myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Them. You don't want to. Do, you don't ever want to get in that business. <laughs> to pay them uh, to do it. You'd lose money if you did that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It, they do a really good job. Good. Even the large prints come out looking nice. really, really good. I've had a lot of positive feedback about that. Nice. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we are now on summertime, so we're a little bit uh, different. And I know some people may be thrown by this because the U.S. went to summertime a little early, just like we go a little late to standard time, <laughs> just because we want to mess with the rest of the world. We do this show at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2100. 2100. 2100 UTC. UTC. And that's going to stay that way for the rest of the summer, I guess, until... In fact, if Marco Rubio has his yeah, way in 2023, we'll, changes their mind. we'll stop doing this entirely. Uh, you can watch live at live.twit.tv, chat live at irc.twit.tv. Join us in Club Twit. If you're a Club Twit member, you can chat there, but there's a lot of other stuff mm -hmm. going on. We've got a big event tomorrow. Patrick Delahanty, yep, yep, our yep. Twit engineer, our coder. Uh, he knows how the back end works, mm -hmm. Mr. Back End. Uh, he will be doing an inside twit at 9 a.m. Pacific. Stacy's Book Club is Thursday, March 24th, a week from Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Unauthorized Bread Book Club. You still have time to read it because it's a novella, as you have time mm -hmm. easily. I've finished it. For sure. I'm done. Yep. And then Paul Therott at the end of the month. Now, that's just really, really the main thing we thought people would want to join Club Twit for is the ad-free versions of all of our shows. Mm -hmm. Turns out the Discord is also a great clubhouse, thanks to you, Ant, and is our community manager, and we're having lots of fun in there. So please uh, join us in there. We All sorts of conversations. We've got our, uh, our uh, Twit Minecraft server for people who want to do that. We talk about sports, space, coding, travel. There's Stacy. <laughs> yeah. I had to make so that gif that week. I had so to do funny. it. Oh, y'all are so funny. You're all, you're all part of it, you know. $7 a month puts you in the club, and I tell you, it is worth every penny of it. Just go to twit.tv slash And we are grateful twit. to every Thank one you. of you there. Thank you. It's, so a, it's a big contribution. That. makes it possible to do things like this week in Weekend Space, which we just launched, and, uh, and a lot more. So it, It's pretty yeah. cool to see the club is growing i love the club every week i really do i hang out there all the time uh we also have of course plenty of free ways you can play we have our twit forums at twit.community our twit mastodon is twit.social you're both invited to join both they're free yep. uh, i do approve each person so that we don't get spammers in there so please just go on in there and i'll prove you within 24 hours uh irc.twit.tv is open to all and of course all of the shows are available for download from the website uh for twig it's twit.tv slash twig there's also a youtube channel dedicated to this week in google so you can watch there that's a good place to share uh, and of course if you have a podcast preferred podcast player if you subscribe there you'll get the show the minute it's available that's the best way our recommended route to listen to this week in google thanks for being here everybody we'll see you next week bye bye Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com. 
In our new This Week in Space podcast, every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher.